Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Half a Crew Movie Review, the week-to-week film commentary podcast where three non-Asian hosts have to avoid questions about Asian cinema to avoid pissing off our only Asian host, Philip. Thought, but we have to avoid questions about fucking anything. So <laughs> I thought I was the Asian host. You're not the Asian host. You're what are you host. fucking like? A plot, a what? plot twist. <laughs> plot twist. <laughs> plot twist. Yes. But Philip's seen everything. I mentioned this last week. Last it's true. Week. Yeah, we've mentioned <laughs> it for like the past five weeks. Philip's a goddamn human library, so it's not even ah ah. It's, ah. it's more important than my friends, family, loved ones. Yeah. Your collection of fucking memories of every goddamn movie that's ever been released. Anyway. If you had the machine from Reminiscence, you could probably make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's all. all right. I thought you went next. Oh, I thought you were going to introduce. Oh, I am your host, Wait, Blake. Hold on. Let's no, keep no let's keep going. All right, all right, all right okay, fine. Right, Sorry, I'm just a fuck up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. have to edit this. Thank you. No, don't no, no, this. Keep, keep it in. Keep it in. Keep it in. So love you. As always, I'm your fucking host that can't goddamn do anything right, Blake. Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. of course joined by Ron. Hi. Hi, Ron. Jason. Hi, Jason. Asian dude. <laughs> okay, Philip. 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 Yeah. Once again, also week to week, can never just say Philip. <laughs> All right. So on this week's podcast, we will be focusing on one of Hong Kong and China's greatest acting talents, Tony Leung, with his unparalleled ability to communicate emotion through his eyes and devout dedication to his work. Tony Leung has crafted a wide range of characters that remain staples of Asian cinema. Such as Lin Wenqing, from uh, aspiring uh, deaf photographer in the film A City of Sadness. Uh, Ho, Pi- Ho Po Wing, um, a gay Chinese man straddled in Argentina in the film Happy Together. To S- stranded. I stranded. Think. Oh, yeah, stranded not stra- I mean, maybe straddled. But... Yeah, survived by Stranded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's straddled at one point. Actually, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> actually either way, we're, it was yeah, He's stranded. stranded for now. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, to Zhao Yu, a mythical Chinese general character from the Romance of the Three Kingdoms in the film Redcliffe. Uh, his, his consistent ability to create believable emotional characters is what helped many of his films become classics, as well as having acclaimed directors such as Ho Xiao Shen, John Wu, Wong Kar Wai, and Ang Lee continually seek him out. We will be focusing on three of his films, Chunking Express, In the Mood for Love, and Lust Caution, which we feel will probably uh, best explicate like his acting range and his uh, kind of stance in uh, t- Taiwanese, Hong Kong, and Chinese cinema. And personally, th- these are some of my favorites. And he's also my favorite. Um, he is my favorite Asian actor. So this is very, I'm very excited for this. This will probably be very personal for me. Yeah. Let's go. All right. So the first one we're going to go off is Chunking Express. The film centers around two stories, both about a lovesick Hong Kong policeman contemplating over his relationship with the woman. The first story is about, um, I say, He uh, what's it called He Ji Wu, cop, cop two two three, two, two, three. Cop two, two, three. Yeah. that's what I'm gonna call him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who falls in love with a mysterious woman in a blonde wig who happens to be a drug mule, <laughs> while the second story is about Cop six six three who is dealing with the breakup while Faye, a quirky snack bar owner, secretly falls in love with him. Okay, so just out of uh, what is everyone's familiarity with uh, Hong Kong cinema, Wong Kar Wai, Tony Leung, like before the, doing the research for this episode? Uh, basically, this. Uh, I've seen <laughs> Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> I've seen Kung Fu Hustle, which I really, really enjoyed. Oh, Kung uh, Fu Hustle is awesome. That's yeah, like, that is awesome. I do really want to see Shaolin Soccer as well. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, I've I'd seen uh, in the mood for love. Um, I'd seen hard boiled. Yeah. I'd seen uh, like I mean a few other ones. I can uh, this hero hero is that is that considered yeah. no it's not no Kong, that's mainland no. China yeah, yeah that's mainland, mainland China because yeah. I, I think at this point <laughs> know, it was like sorry. they were already transitioning from Kate John like, Cena <laughs> <laughs> like they were already transitioning and then you know when we get into kind of background stuff and his he gets like especially in, in the mood for love they were like like Hong Kong was transitioning from you know back into mainland China and then everybody was getting fucked. And then Jackie Chan did a whole flip code, and he's like, oh, Hong Kong? Democracy sucks, and now I'm mainly in China, <laughs> you know? 
Um, um, I I feel like I've seen Tony Liang before. Liang. Liang. Liang, sorry. I feel like I've definitely seen him before. I, I knew his the... face. Yeah, I, I knew, I knew he face. was a big actor. I just don't, I can't place him I'm, anywhere. I'm 100% sure I've seen him in movies before. He's... Honestly, I didn't know that he was in Hard Boiled. I didn't recognize him from Hard Boiled because I, even though I think that was probably the first thing I saw him in yeah, until yeah. later that I was like, oh shit, that's the dude from Hard Boiled. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's, he's pretty invisible in that movie in a good way where like he's yeah. like, you know, in... And same with Hero. Also, I didn't realize he was in. Yeah, yeah, he's he's so different in here. Oh, you watch Hero, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hero. Hero's like it's like um, yeah, he has like a whole different look and weird, and it's like his mannerism and stuff. And then he goes from like really, I, I know all the films we watch right here, except maybe Less Caution. He's generally a little bit more stoic, and he communicates mostly with his eyes and everything. Uh, more subdued performances, but like early on in his career, and some of the sprinkled on, like kind of like hard boiled, like he gets really expressive and stuff like that, which I appreciate about Tony Leung. Mm, well, I thought he did a really good job, like just watching these three different completely roles. He like totally nails all three of them perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you didn't see any similarities between uh, <laughs> Lust Caution and Chung King? I thought he was like, oh, you know the what? Now guy. that you <laughs> say it, yeah. kind of. <laughs> No, yeah, like, but I know I've seen him in shit. I just can't place it on it. But like, I remember when we started, we were like, "Oh, we're gonna do a Tony Leung episode." As I was watching, it, I was like, "I know this guy somehow." Yeah, yeah I've definitely seen... just heard his name. And has... this is an ignorant question: Has he been in like any no, American no, films? No, like, so Shang Chi is the first. The first? Yeah, the okay. first one. That one's that, interesting. Oh. He, he purposely because you know he makes enough money. He's also a pop star. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, like, yeah. I watched an interview of him, and he's like, "I was working on an album at this point," and I was just like, "You do music too?" Yeah. yeah. Oh no, there's um when we get into the films, a lot of some of these actors are also like seventy five million, hundred million copy fucking selling singers and stuff like that. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, Especially it's the the actress from chunking express yeah like, she seems like like a legit pop star turned actress rather than like yeah. jackie chan who's like i'm gonna sing and it's like don't <laughs> no, sing dude no it's not <laughs> not sorry not jackie i love you but you leave no. jackie alone he's, he's, <laughs> saying, he's gonna I, leave an angry he, comment I, I, I think I, I love old jackie now jackie kind of seems like an asshole not gonna lie, <laughs> but like uh, old Jackie, I have a fondness. Oh wait, actually, yeah, Jackie Chan. Have you guys seen that? That counts as Hong Kong cinema. Have you seen his Hong Kong Jackie Chan films? I've seen um, Rush wow. Hour. <laughs> <laughs> that was directed by Brett Ratner. I've seen maybe? what Drunken Master. Uh, uh, we we watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we watched yeah, Drunken Master. Great. Great um, I think on TV uh, when I was a kid, I saw one where there were two of him. Philip. Before we dive like, in this, I have you know, a, do you okay. know what movie I'm talking about? There were two Jackie Chans in the movie. So before we, <laughs> <it's kinda> cool. <laughs> Philip, before we dive into this, I have a pretty fundamental question for you about Chunking Express. Yeah. If John Krasinski directed it, would he play both characters? <laughs> yeah. No, not only will he play both characters, he'll also play the snack bar owner. <laughs> he'll play the drug baron. <laughs> he might even put on a wig and play Faye, you know. <laughs> and then randomly, you know, the cop 663 would be talking, you know, having his inner monologue about, like, uh, his flight attendant. And he'd be like, I miss her! <laughs> oh, my God. Ah! Oh, yeah. A right, brief background of this film before we kind of get into it is uh, Wong Kar Wai. This guy's such a beast. This is actually, you know, this is his only film where he makes it on a short production schedule. Every one of his films I've are heard like, things like about six this. months I, yeah. to a year or a yeah. year plus. When we get into yeah, Mood I for think, Love. Um, yeah, In the Mood for Love was like 15, 15 months, months, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the point where um, his, uh, his, uh, his collaborator, Christopher Doyle, like quit. <laughs> oh, what's it called? And we'll, we'll, like, we'll get into that one. That's it, it's wild. Um, yeah, he had a just two month break uh, from editing his Wush, uh, Wushu epic film Ashes Time, which is also a very weird martial arts film, which definitely one day we'll cover. Um, his screenplay wasn't even finished by the time film began. He was just like, "Fuck it!" Like he got financing somehow. He called up Christopher Doyle, like, "Hey, you just worked with me on this. Do you want to shoot another film?" And he just called like a bunch of random people. It's like, "You free for like this amount of time?" And they were like. Sure, we need work. <laughs> I mean, the film has a real run and gun energy yeah. to it. Yeah, there's a lot of it, it works. Energy. Yeah, it definitely does so well. Yeah, yeah. and then it's like yeah, and, so, and then he he um and there's like the he was like and he brags about it too, and I'm like oh you really shouldn't, but um he he's like oh yeah you know during we had to we we took a break for a single day for New Year's Day, and then during that day I wrote the second story, the entire second <laughs> half of the film, and I called up Tony Leung who was like um I only I do not have much time, I'm recording an album. And I don't know if I could do this. 
And he's like, okay, how much time do you have? Only two weeks, and it has to be now. Perfect. Just come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's pretty Wong much Kar how it does have that reputation. Hey, I, I haven't even seen a movie by him, and I knew like all this like crazy shit about how he's just like, let's go, and like doesn't usually shoot on a script, right? No, he he purpose he purposely doesn't. He has like an idea for a story. And he I doesn't mean, storyboard, right? Yeah, I mean, he, sometimes he does have a script, but just won't. He purposely he never ever shows the script to the actors. Weird. Yeah, he he would just tell them. <laughs> so this is your dialogue for this scene. But just use it as a template and just shoot. And he's like, and then he wanted. I like that though. Yeah, that's he, uh, yeah. You could tell Chunking Express was kind of made by that. Like, yeah. Yeah. By the, yeah. But then, like, in a weird way, because like, it, because like, this was not just his like first film, right? This is like, like fifth or sixth or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he already kind of has a visual language, and also he has uh, Christopher Doyle, who is like, he has such a weird backstory too. He's like, uh, that's his cinematographer, right? Yeah, it's like his English. He's like the English dude or uh, Wells or Welsh or something, and he. He came to China and just completely mastered Mandarin, Canto, Shanghainese, and stuff like that. Huh. And then, but also it fucked up with his accent, so he has talks to the Chinese accent and stuff. Oh, that's kind of cool weird. weird. It's, it's weird. <laughs> uh, but he's a, he's a cool like. I saw the video where he was talking about Chunking Express. And he's like drinking, falling over, flirting with random girls in the video while talking. About <laughs> it. He's such a character. Um, true art is created by madmen. <laughs> yeah, 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 and true. and he's known for um like he's very talented because he's known for making beautiful shots just on the fly. Because like he's known for like jazz style, like kind of uh, cinematography, which really works for this. Um, yeah, and then you know, and then there was a third story. This was supposed to be a uh, tropic. Uh, yeah, 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 it was supposed to be three stories. And then the third one was uh, spun off in his own film, Fallen Angels, which I also recommend. It's about a love sick hitman. Hmm. Yeah, uh, what's it called? Lots of love sickness in these stories. Yeah, that, that, specifically yeah. Chunking, and <laughs> yeah, I mean you can tell then that that Fallen Angels kind of is following that same he, thread. Even when he made a story about it, man, uh, Bruce Lee's uh, master and Graham, uh, which also stars Tony Leung. Um, it's also about it, man, who, ha- who has love sickness for another female who was from another yeah, rival. It seems to be a common theme. He's a very, <laughs> he's a very, I, I guess, who hurt you, like, Wong? Eternally, <laughs> he's eternally heartbroken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, um, but yeah, and then this film, the two locations they shot, and I think this is actually kind of important to the themes and wants to get into it, but uh, chunking mansions in uh, Shimsha Shu, uh, Ka- Ka- Kowloon, Hong Kong. I'm sorry, Spencer. Um, I know this is like a place that you visited and I'm sorry I mispronounced it. Uh, Spencer is the person who never listens to his podcast and refuses to. He's my <laughs> friend from Hong Kong. <laughs> um, he, Hong All right, Wong, Spencer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wong Kar Wai grew up in this area. Uh, he has a very strong connection to it. Um, and he, this is also a very unique area where like usually a lot of Westerners and immigrants, as we can see in uh, Chunking Express, are in the area. They just kind of use the extras there and that thing to their advantage. And mm. the second story, which is the Tony Leung story is uh, in Long Kwai Fong in Central, which is like a business district, which, you know, airports and like a lot of fast foods and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, and, and he used it pretty well. Running gun. They didn't even have permits um, to shoot and they didn't have permits to wear the cop costume. <laughs> uh, Tony Leung said he had to like wear a coat to like hide whenever they weren't shooting. <laughs> or they would like um hire some like people or girls to like flirt with actual cops to get them away from set <laughs> <laughs> so they could shoot. It, it is wild. Okay. Um. Let, right. So let's get into just overall opinions, and then before we crack down, what do you guys think of this film as your first time watching? And this is your. I know Ron. This is your second Wong Kar Wai film. But for Jason and Blake, how is this as your first Wong Kar Wai experience? I fucking loved it. I thought it was just. I don't know. It's. It gets, it's hard for me to like something as much as I like this. Like, I don't know what it was. I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen. Um, and everything about it too, like the way it was shot, the energy, the lighting, the performances, the music, of course, yes. like that's a huge thing in this and in his other movie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just everything about it is electric in my opinion. It's just this like beautifully paced movie with these like really like quirky, but also real interactions between characters um, the performances are all just fantastic, and I, I like all the dialogue a lot. It's just, I don't know. The the energy that this movie has is just unparalleled, in my opinion. I just, I fucking loved it. Yeah, no, I would agree with basically everything Blake just said. But what really stands out to me is just how honest and real the characters all felt. They were all just, it felt like real people just living their lives and trying to get yeah. by and they all have these like weird little quirks that like most people have but they only express when you they're alone yeah. you know and each character had something like that that really just drew me to them it was 
really interesting. And I love the camera work. I love oh, how yeah. f- fluid it was the whole time, which is kind of different from the other film we watched both yeah. from him. Um, and I like the fact that he can do both and execute fucking perfectly. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I felt like I felt a, uh, I spent a summer in Hong Kong, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. like on the streets, hanging out, getting to know people. Being like, sad, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, it, yeah, it was just beautifully done. Um, yeah, I think yeah, like I said, all the emotions felt very real, very raw. Um, it felt intensely personal at times, and intimate, but also like still upbeat, even mm, though we're dealing yes. with these like very sad <clears throat> themes. Yeah, it was um, it was fun the whole time. It was, I was having fun with it. It's yeah. very melancholy, but it's also kind of happy in a strange way. It's a really cool balance that it's, it's able to strike. Yeah. yeah, and the way it used the musical motifs over and over again. Yeah. Like that they song just, has been stuck in my head all the <laughs> 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 time. So well. Yeah, like the, it's like the five main songs that were just like so uh, perfectly used. You know which song I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. California <laughs> Dreamin' yeah. or whatever. That has been stuck in my head for... It plays like... 10 12 times, times. Yeah. <laughs> and i think like probably my I, I know a couple other films like in like america's and after this like that was that song was being grad, overused or, or i thought you're gonna say like just songs being overused in general but yeah. like stylistically yeah I, mean, I think i think this one does the best it, it, it's, it's interesting to have western music and eastern cinema because yeah. it has like a weird yeah. dichotomy especially in hong kong because that kind of plays into Eastern versus Western culture kind of clashing. And, and I loved uh, Faye's, well, it's not Faye, but the actress who plays Faye, her cover of The Cranberries. Yeah. Uh, well, no, her trained. name is Faye too. Oh, it's really Faye? Yeah, she's Faye. Oh, okay. Faye. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, her, her her cover of The Cranberries song was yeah, like really fantastic. Good. And it's it felt really like good. that perfect blend of, again, a mix of Eastern and Western music. Um, well, like Western music with Eastern influences. It was awesome. Yeah. And then. Yeah, it's just awesome. It's much better than the um, the Chinese version or the Mandarin version of I think it's the Mandarin version of uh, uh, Madonna's Material Girl and Crazy Rich Asians. Oh no! That came out of nowhere. It's like and I was like, what? <laughs> and, I was like, and it's during like a wedding where it's like kind of grand. Yeah, but I think this one it was like yeah, way more appropriate and, and it's it's a heartfelt. So okay, so the first the first story we kind of go into is uh, the the one with. You know, um, cop two, hey, two, yeah, three. Cop, cop two, two, three. Hey, Ji Wu, Arsenal Ji Wu. Um, and he's uh, recently broke up with his girlfriend May, which is <laughs> just <laughs> any other director. I don't know. I would give him shit for like how, um, what's it called? How uh, un- like, like how unsubtle or how like repetitive like certain type of like uh, themes and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. he just makes it work right here because it just all fits in his weird pathetic little. Uh, yeah, I mean, world. it works with the character. Like, yeah. I mean we've all been in that spot where we've been in a relationship and it's done and like, it's all you can focus on and it's just constantly in your head. Yeah. Or at least. Yeah. And you go out and buy 30 pineapple. Cans. Yeah. Pineapple. Yeah. That's a little much. The but... pineapple is the expiration date. It kind of, I, I, I'm thinking cause I, I know, um, Paul Thomas Anderson is a big fan of Wong Kar Wai. I'm mm-hmm. thinking like if punch drunk love, was like a little bit like influenced oh, by I can see this, it. yeah. Because yeah. you know, like you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys the, see the Miles Bob? and everything. Yeah, yeah. Miles, yeah. and he buys a little stuff. I though that's also based on a true story of a guy, um, do, like buying stuff to get flyer miles. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just weird. It's like, yeah, he buys, especially with because like it's expiration date of May first, which is like his birthday. His and birthday, it, and, and his girlfriend is May, and there's another girl named May that he tries to ask out, but Richard got to her first. <laughs> yeah, 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 Richard. Yeah. He waited too long. What's it called? Um, yeah. So, and then, and at the same time, our second character, our second protagonist in this, is the woman in the blonde, blonde wig, played by Bridget Lynn, um, who is also, I think, somehow, without you know the tools of her eyes and stuff like that, she's able to kind of communicate a lot with her body posture. Oh the yeah, way she walks. Um, very expressive. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, she and she has like this duality to her. She's like this, I guess. Kind. Of, I mean, like. Well, they try to present her as like someone like a bombshell or like a mysterious figure, and she's also a drug mule. Yeah, and um, and she has this hidden like almost like a, a veracity to her, um, like as you see with the gun. Well, later on, how easy like how easy it is like probably hinting at a past where like she definitely seemed like she used it before. Oh well, yeah, I yeah, mean absolutely. she's in that life. Yeah. She's it, she very easily just killed like. Three, three people. Guys. Three people. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Like the, the two. Were they, they're, I'm assuming they're Indian immigrants. Like I think like. Yeah. The or, ones that try yeah. to jump her. Yeah. And then she just bang, bang, bang. Just like shoots him like nothing. Just super quick. And then runs straight off. Yeah. And then kills. And then there's a drug baron at the end. Also just like. Yep. Hard yeah. cold in the, the back. The English dude. That's just. And I don't know. I love that shot at the end. Like once you kill it. When she kills him. And then it just zooms in on the expiration date. 
It's like <laughs> everything has an expiration date. Yeah, yep. Exactly. How much you guys think like when he was shooting this, like he had this plan or did he just shoot so much that he could edit it in a way where it made it seem like it was planned with the expiration date and with, the coming up? With this one, knowing what I know about the production, how fast it was, I feel like he had to go in every day with a plan and stick to that plan, mm-hmm. right? Um, but with um, the other film, which we'll get to, <laughs> I get the sense that there was a lot more in that one. Yeah, with this I feel like he definitely had the expiration date thing in mind for this particular story. That was like f- seemed like the central focus throughout. Like the a lot of the main themes kind of seem to circulate around that, uh, from his birthday to like you know the kind of just how quickly people die yeah. and yeah. everything. Uh, yeah, so I feel like he definitely had that in mind for sure. I don't know exactly if he knew exactly how he was gonna execute it. Um, that's where it kind of seems to have just a lot of that. Uh, what is it? The French New Wave style that he seemed yeah. to be touching on, which is kind of like more just uh, on the fly, you know, breaking a lot of rules. But it was great, like that kind of. Uh, I forget. It was that. like the the low shutter speed sequence. Yeah, right? the like, low yeah. shutter speed stuff. Like that shit was awesome. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was so good. I like with the music. It was like, I, I was it like strings or like some horns attached to like the music. Yeah. Like, and it was like created this unsettling feel where like he was like running. Like, as a cop, like, trying to catch his victims. Somehow his face seemed to be in focus, even though everything was just a blur. I'm like, I don't know how you did that. That was awesome, though. (laughs) These are all, like, things that would normally bother me, but, like, he pulls it off so well in this. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever, like, I don't know, whenever I see something, like, super weird shit like that, sometimes it's just like, okay. But, like, in this, it's like, holy fucking shit. Yeah, like, that weird motion you go for. Literally starts off with a bang, too, with the opening title sequence, just boom, 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 chunking express. And then here we go. (laughs) And he's just chasing down a guy and stuff. Yeah, I think this, like, probably his, like, most fast-paced film, for sure. Yeah, Yeah, it it was definitely chaotic, especially those scenes with um, that effect. It really drove the point home of just, chaos in the streets <laughs> there was a lot of chaos in like 90s filmmaking yeah they love like in all cultures they all kind of like that like fast-paced like chaos thing like darren aronofsky's pie and stuff like that sorry darren aronofsky's been on my mind so i had to talk about him <laughs> yeah. oh yeah that's it that's oh yeah i, I can see that with, yeah, with like, Biden, so. yeah i think people like tarantino a lot of people who are influenced by that french new wave style they kind yeah. of like we're bringing that into the, like, the new wave of cinema and stuff. oh i have something to say that i told to jason and ronald already and they called me idiot piece of uh, idiot piece of shit <laughs> philip the first half of this movie kind of reminded me of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind can you see it at all all right tell me okay before i say anything <laughs> tell me exactly why you think so just because of like the melancholy protagonist going through a breakup really like over dramatic but in a realistic way that someone might react to that like i think that like when you're in a breakup you can act irrational but like hearing it from the other outside does seem irrational like he is like he is irrationally sad like but it's presented shows up at her at her outside her window like every night for a month or like the fact that like i think it's like my favorite scene in the whole movie but like the scene where he's like what about the pineapples have you thought about what though they feel like like i don't know (laughs) it's just it kind of reminds me of that in that sense. There's nothing else li- like it, but it really reminded me of it. I could see, I could see thematically narrative. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. And I mean, by the way, I didn't call Blake an idiot piece of shit. I just said no. Uh, <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see thematically narrative. That would be the case. I'm like I said, I would, I wouldn't even. What's it called? I wouldn't even be surprised if this kind of was inspired. Inspired it. because, like, like I said, this this film was like a big hot spot for a lot of different filmmakers. Um, filmmakers stuff. Take, yeah, because yeah. it's like. And then Wong Kar Wai was like, not, like Wong Kar, like before, um, they're for the um, 80s Brad kids and stuff, uh, or 80s, 70s Brad kids, like, you know, Scorsese, Coppola and stuff. They're, 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 their director that they go to was Akira Kurosawa. So Akira Kurosawa was like, your director's favorite director. Yeah. But then like for a lot of filmmakers like Barry Jenkins or even like, you know, probably Tarantino or stuff like that, um, their favorite director was, their, your director's favorite director was Wong Kar Wai. Yeah. Like you see a lot of that influence kind of creep in. Um, even like Link later probably use some of the stuff in his before trilogy. Oh, I'm trilogy. sure. Yeah, Link yeah. Later. What's yeah. it called? Even though I know Link later is before trilogy, it was came out roughly at the same time. But mm. but then eight years, no, no, actually came out after. But this is the whole thing. But um, yeah. So I I could see I could see that happening. Like you know, Charlie Kaufman watches Chunking Express. Like that's cool, but it takes like the basic. But also, Charlie Kaufman is just like a really depressing, <laughs> depressed dude. <in> <laughs> really depressed existential man. Yeah, yeah. 
It's like even like when he makes an animated film, we we watch An- Animal Lisa. I'm not even trying oh, to yeah. like. I'm not even trying to say like that Charlie Kaufman like necessarily. I'm just saying that it really like reminded me of it. I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me a bit of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Not so much for me, but I think that's you know. I mean, <laughs> you yeah, I mean that. just <laughs> like if you if you want to say a character being sad, sad okay, about but, like, an ex girlfriend. It's, it's not just that. It's how like. It's the the type of sad, the type of lovesick, the type of melancholy, but also how the characters like processing it and like kind of talking about it. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. I know it came out after, but basically Wong Kar Wai copied Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. <laughs> yeah. Even though it came out after. He, he went, yeah, he, yeah. He he went, a, he went he in a, future and time. Yeah, Dude, like, Tenet. He, he got Tenet. A time travel glasses with his, you know, his sunglasses. And he put it on and he was able to go see Eternal Sunshine. Oh, I see. But he went bad. But he created That would paradox. be a better movie than Tenet. Yeah, he created he a paradox because, <laughs> because now Charlie Coffin watched his film and got influenced. So with that, huh. Remember in Tenet okay. when the birds going so, backwards? Okay. okay. So, um, and then we have our second. And to watch all the movies back. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> yeah, and then we have our uh, second story, which is uh, you know, uh, which is about Cop Six Six Three, played by um, Tony Leung, and he just, uh, I know he's like, <laughs> under what's it called, uh, Tony Leung, who is um, what's it called, who just recently broke up with a flight attendant played by Valerie Fong, I think, or Valerie. Did they Cow. break up, or like I got the sense that they were planning on continuing? Yeah, no, they were they were in like a relationship and stuff, and yeah, yeah and then. Like this other girl got in the way of that, right? No, 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 I, no they, they she, she gave him back his up. key and everything. I mean, yeah, I got the yeah. sense that oh, yeah, okay. she kind of just dumped him because she was a little bit um, bored, maybe. Yeah, I think she was just bored. She was right? bored, like, and she was fond of the guy. Actually, the, the yeah. main theme of the second one is like routine seems to be a huge part of it with like yeah. the food analogies. This guy loves food analogies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We even talk about. Well, I guess we'll, we'll kind of get into like motifs and stuff. But yeah, that's that's a. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the case. Yeah, she got bored, bored of the routine, bored of like a cop. I mean, you see at the end, she's with like a biker guy with yeah. like no like clear discernible uniform. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, how it represents freedom. She's not even in her uniform too at the end. Um, what's it called? And by the way, that's those are that was one of my favorite sequences. Like, um, it's, she comes uh, back to him. No, no, no. Um, I mean, their flashback they sequence. Into, oh, okay. their, their oh, flashback yeah, sequence yeah. when um they they played the Dina Washington song. What a difference a day, uh, makes. Mm-hmm. And it's like pretty much just in the whole sequence where like they have the song playing and the lyrics and it just pretty much tells the whole story without words. But I mean, it uses a song yeah. um, and just like a couple of shots to explain an entire relationship within like a one or two minutes and something that like a lot, a lot of Western filmmakers could do somehow. But this guy does it like expertly. He, he seems I mean? to be like a master of intimacy. Like, they oh, were, yeah, they were just uh, like all the intimate moments across both movies that we saw. He, he seemed to just know how to play those those little like intricate moments between a couple or between two significant yeah. others that just like, uh, I don't know, they're just like maybe just get glossed over by other people. But like he really excels at like just really pointing those out and you feel it you feel yeah. like yeah. like oh these people just have a connection and all the chemistry was just there it was, it was great yeah and i think that probably goes to like his shooting style right like he makes sure like he doesn't have a script and he just like he doesn't have them like say what he wrote in script like he has the actors like stay in a room together and try to build chemistry first and then shoot or he keeps shooting until there's chemistry <laughs> 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 and then that kind of works you're gonna fall in love and you're gonna like it. <laughs> exactly and then <laughs> um and then he does like weird shots and then like there's one thing that he said about like i think he i think i read this somewhere where um one of the reasons why he, sh- he chooses to shoot on film he said that just looks better for love stories and intimacy than digital interesting and then i and i kind of agree because the film has that like you know soft like overlay look to it and stuff like that and you don't have surprising like the less the lack of details actually kind of work you know making that kind of softer image mm-hmm. yeah and then and then like you know even those shots like you know the one with the airplane and stuff where she's yeah like, we're, we're going i love that back. i love that whole thing yeah it's yeah. like and then just that one shot like with the airplane one shows like it communicates okay she's like a flight attendant they're on a yeah. plane um, even if you didn't like how to sound off and then the plane was going across her back but also communicates like her attractiveness right like, it shows her, her entire um, body and like their intimacy like as, as ron was saying intimacy mm-hmm. it's 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 expert shit that i am thinking like oh gosh it's like very, very few people do like nowadays um, big brain directing yeah <laughs> what's it called and then you know you also have the sequence with uh faye right like once like you know faye's like this quirky oh you know what uh, before we get that we forgot the 0.01 centimeter thing 
Oh, yeah, I was yeah, gonna bring yeah. that up. I, I yeah. love that. that I love like, like the I, motif, right? Yeah, the idea that like you could just brush past someone, and then either they'll come back into your life or they won't. Um, um, on that same note, the second time they do it, which transitions the film from the first part to the second part, yeah, that was some fucking genius level shit. Like I remember just being like, oh. Well, okay then. Um, <laughs> like, because I didn't, I didn't read anything about this film. Thank God, because I think going into this blind and not knowing that this movie is going to do that is pretty fucking awesome. Because I had no idea that they were, we were just going to switch main characters halfway through. Like, just yeah. the concept of like a character walking into like it's not really a diner, but I'll call it a diner. But just walking up to that diner, ordering, and then um, just walking into that diner, ordering, and then just like talking to someone that's now going to be like the main character of the next part of the story. Just super fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. I know it's, yeah. I know, I know it's been done since too, but I, that no, was, it was a great, it was yeah, a great little transition. Great. And they had yeah. little moments beforehand where you see a uh, Faye walk past the woman in the blonde wig. Yes. Uh, she has the, she has the, the Garfield. The well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then later you see, uh, you see Tony cop, Leung. Yeah, yeah. You see cop six, six, three passing Tony Leung, like, you know, when he's on the stairway and stuff or well, he runs past him and he's like above and everything, which is just cool. Like little, nice little transitional. Yeah. 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 Stuff. It's like just little seeds in the world. It's like, and then, um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I really love that. I really do love that stuff that like, even though I don't know how much of a plan that he had, but it had the illusion of a plan <laughs> the yeah. illusion of structure that worked. Uh, and it's fine. Like it's, it, it works and it's stuff like that. And the 0.01 centimeters, like, you know, the, the whole thing of like, you know, like urban space and like, you know, like in any cities, it's like, it's, it's tight. Yeah. Tight mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And sometimes like, yeah, that set that 0.01 centimeter could be intimacy or it could be strangers. It yeah, like yeah. an infinite amount of possibilities, and that that's cool. I love that shit. Um, it had also uh, transitioning <coughs> to the next part when you finally Tony Leung meets Faye. It's like probably my favorite meet meet cute in like yeah. any movie so far. Just like they're both talking over the music and oh. just their dialogue was so great. We're just like, how can you think with that on? It's like I don't like to think. He's like, well, what's your like? What do you like? And she's like, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> that was so great. I was like, oh, I'm immediately hooked. I like both these people. Yeah, it's like right away. W- quick way to un- like to display characters. One's like overthinker. One's th- they have things and nothing. It's like for, like carefree. Mm-hmm. It's like this is like a pixie manic dream girl, but done right without like being yes. caricature. Yeah, yeah, not being yeah. over the top. Yeah, and... not like five hundred days. I'm just kidding, even though I like that film. <laughs> 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 uh, or Garden State. Uh, Zach Braff. Another fucking John Krasinski clone. <laughs> How dare you take Florence? Should we have a ringer for like? <laughs> does we have a tally? Dude, he looks like, like her dad. I know it's, <laughs> it's so weird. weird. I was like, but whatever. I think we should have a tally for every time John Krasinski is brought up on this podcast. I know, it's God. He probably hates this film too. He's just like, I could have made this better. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, my 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 single takes would have been better for some reason. You know, what I mean, it's like, it's, instead of open one centimeter, it'll be one meter. Oh, better, more distance. The pineapple would scream. Yeah, <laughs> his face would be on the pineapple, going ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, uh, um, so um. And then I even love that one shot where like um, there's a pause and then, you know, she, like, you know, she's like, what do you want to order? And then he just like puts his finger, like come closer. This awkward pause. Chef salad. And she, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this little touches like that. make like, you know, kind of bring this like this. And then the director we're going to talk about um, Ang Lee, where it's like details in the frame, details in the storytelling. Like that's what separates this like a good director from a great director. Yeah, and then it's all by the way. I'm just gonna tap it two more time to. You know, there you go. There you <laughs> go. Now you're done. <laughs> That's your three. Uh, I know uh, what's it called. Um, yeah, and then and then even like um like with Tony Leung, like his uh, sequences with his uh, towels and stuff like that. I crying. love that. Yeah, whole, yeah. Uh, like quirk of his where he just like talks to the inanimate objects in you're his apartment. Moldy. Yeah, he's like talking to his soap, and it's like like halfway done he's like you're you're letting yourself go <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Or, and then when it gets replaced he's like i'm gonna uh, gain some weight yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like i don't know it's kind of giving me like that really like reinforces like the fact that i think loneliness is the ultimate theme of this movie yeah, yeah. Where he's just it's so sad but it's also kind of funny like if i'm just talking with inanimate objects yeah it's yeah. funny at times but then like 
Yeah, it gets sad. Like he's talking to his towel <laughs> and it's like dripping water. And he's like, "Oh, you're crying." Like, <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay. Oh, oh the, the dialogue about how his apartment is weeping. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, at the uh, when uh, I think it's probably with Faye like left the faucet on or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and the little subtlety of like showing him with his, uh, or maybe not so subtle <laughs> of his like plush toys. Yeah, yeah. And then you see like he has starts off with a little one, then he's got the big one, and then later you see next to his bed he just has a pile <laughs> of plushy <laughs> toys. He's like, he's a lonely man. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he's really got to fill that space space with something and i love the fact that he's a cop right yeah. because like you don't picture cops being this way at no. home <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's, it's like this this whole year has that's been... what i mean like it feels very real yeah yeah it's like they're like you know it feels authentic and they're not like he's not judging these characters for being lonely no, no, no. it's like, just who they are like some like you know like what uh, western directors like or even european directors um lawyers one tree or something like they would judge them for his like their fucking yeah, quirk sure. or something like that or like, like a character like that would be like a side character yeah. that's like the comic relief yeah you know? and then making them butt of a joke yeah like, lawyers one tree is like you're a sex addict your fucking life's gonna suck you're gonna <laughs> fucking suck you never meaning a bitch you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's how he is <laughs> oh like, lars yeah. Oh, I God. understand Hitler. And oh my God, Wait, <laughs> that's, his, that's his famous quote. I, I have a bone to pick when we get into um in the move for about, in the move for love about Lars because in the move. Let's just say this: so, in the move for love was about to win the all grand picture, but it lost to a certain film, and oh, it irritates me. Is it breaking okay. the waves? We'll get to it. We'll get to no, it. We'll no, we'll get to it. Um, what's it called? So okay, so yeah, and the, you know, there's that stuff, and you know, even like. I think there was an actual restaurant called California when they were doing lo- location scouting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Was there? Or like, they, or like they, it said California or something on the like display. And then they, I don't know if they incorporated that the narrative or they just changed it afterwards, but brilliant. You know I mean? He did write in a day. And you're probably like filming and stuff, you know? He's like, yeah. Oh, what was going on with that? Well, that yeah, works. I'm surprised you didn't have a line where he's like, wow, remember how she used to say she always wanted to wait? She always wanted to run away to California. I better go check out that place where the restaurant that says California on it. That was a Fast and Furious reference. I know. <laughs> it's, not a, it's, not even, it's not even just a Fast and Furious reference. It's like a Black Widow reference. It's, God. Like, it's like even Don't Breathe too reference. I don't know why so many like filmmakers nowadays think like people are, like their audience is stupid that they have to be hand fed this information. I think that's just like <sighs> studio think though. The studios like they won't get it. They won't get it. Make it obvious. I think that's old. Probably what it is. Yeah, old is like the <laughs> yeah, fucking. Old. Oh yeah, that's so, yeah. it's gonna be a while before a movie outdoes what that movie. Did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My calcium. I know. So on, on the next Neil Breen movie, they'll they'll do it. They'll, they'll Neil Breen. It's clean. It's all <laughs> clean. <laughs> How's it called? I, I'm just hoping, like you know, once, I'm, I'm I'm excited for Shang Chi because like you know, totally, and the reviews have been great. So I'm I'm just hoping there's not moments like that. Do you, like, do you think he's gonna be a lovesick like? <laughs> oh no, I, I am. I'm, I'm guaranteed that he will be. You oh. know, what I mean? yeah, I'm guaranteed it will be. Um, and because I'm, 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 is I'm, he gonna have like plush animals he talks to in the movie? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> he does have a tiger. Um, what's it called? Okay, so so yeah, and then you know, there's a whole thing where like they're supposed to have a date. Um, and I love the dialogue. Like, oh, she she. She did show up, but she was just in a different California. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me in another California, and they come back a year later. Um, you know, and then you know, it, it, you know, with like her making a new boarding pass, she's a flight attendant, mm-hmm. and uh, she still has him on his mind, and uh, he no longer is a cop. He's a yeah. He, he took over the, the restaurant. That yeah, he always frequented. Yeah, it was, it was a great a like black cup of coffee every day. Yeah, which is interesting. Like it just shows like character progression without you know directly telling us that your character is progressing black widow um, yeah like, and, and i like that he's playing the music at the end like yeah. again that the musical motifs just end over and over mm-hmm. or go over and over and then by the end he's still playing it because he just you know because he is thinking of her he's missing her and that's like his song for her and it shows that he's like more carefree now yeah, you know yeah. she definitely had an impact on him yeah even as like body language is a little more loose he's like, yeah oh, yeah definitely stuff like that she's like where do you want to go he's not wearing a anywhere. uniform <laughs> yeah and one of the most romantic lines where do you, uh, take like anywhere take me anywhere where you go yeah you know anywhere yeah. you want to take me yeah, anywhere you want to take me yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh great Beautiful. way to end that yeah. movie yeah, yeah. And, then, and just great. like I, I thought that like when she gave him the letter and then he threw it away I really thought that's where it's going to end. Yeah, me too. I'd seen In the Moon for Love first, and I was like, no, no not again. <laughs> Instead of a bitch, don't do it. And then, no, he, he like, I like how he's dries kind of, it off. In a yeah, he comes hot back, dries rack. it off, and he's like, fuck, I should have done that. Yeah. And he's like, Is trying that like to... a hot dog rack? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I love that. But if I was the owner of that place, I would get so pissed and like, fucking dirty. Yeah, I was, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking that. I was like, damn, that's 
I mean, good for you, but hey. <laughs> there's like a lot I of did, little, uh, little. I did really love that. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was gonna say there's little moments where it's like normally things would like irk me a bit, where like he's, uh, she's switching things around in his apartment and stuff. I'm like, how would he not notice that? But he also is like he he stated that he's pretty oblivious. He's like, I'm starting to notice things more. The sardines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, sardines don't even taste like sardines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love that she like replaces the labels too, which is which is great. You know, yeah. Dedication and stuff. Uh, and, and then, like, he's just talking to Garfield, even <laughs> though he never had a Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, he was talking to it as though it was the big white dog. He's like, yeah. you're looking a little different. <laughs> 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 Maybe you're not supposed to take it quite literally, too, though, also. I know. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, it but like, it's still yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't even care at this point. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Uh, let's, like, let's talk about, like, kind of, like, some of the recurring motifs, like, main the main ones. Like, we were talking about the uh, opening ones, like, space, right? Yeah. Um, uh, food yeah, is a big one. Food, uh, like pineapple, noodles, chef salad, fish and chips, and sardines. And Which, oh, and that yeah. was my favorite segment of the second half of the movie was the whole like ordering thing where he's like, yeah. wait, maybe try fish and chips this time. And then like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe try pizza. Or get both. Yeah. yeah, or get both. Yeah, I don't know. I just, great. Yeah. I love Fucking the... genius shit. I love the snack shop owner. That dude is just playing oh, Cupid the, the whole time. Oh, he's the real yeah. OG of the yeah. movie. Yeah. Like, he has to deal with these sad sack losers. <laughs> he's like, just ask her out, man. Yeah, you're, you're too long. late. Bitch, you got her. He is, there. Another one. he is there for our first protagonist's like, most pathetic moment, too, when he's just like, oh. calling people, and he's like, we went to fourth grade together. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> oh, you're married now? Oh, you got kids? Oh, oh, oh yeah. It's been five man. years since we talked? Five years? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh man, it's been that long. Jeez. Oh, and then like, oh my god, <laughs> and, and, and the communication devices, phones, letters. That's a big yeah. thing, right? Like, that's like in a weird way. Like it, it makes you feel more disconnected. Like that people talk to each other mostly through phones or letters and stuff like that instead of like in the person. face to face. Yeah. yeah, and then and ironically, the people that you know they fall in love with is the face to face interactions, yeah. the commentary and stuff like that. Yeah, and when he tries to get back with me and talks and <laughs> nothing. Right? Yeah, or even um, Valerie. Not Valerie, it's, that's the actress's name. But then the flight attendant, uh, played by Valerie Chow, like you know, letters and stuff like that didn't do shit for them. Yeah, yeah, even didn't do shit for Faye and the uh, cops. Six six three. Yeah. It's not until they met where it's reunited in the love. Yeah, it's 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 good shit. And transportation devices, escalators, airplanes, airports, trans. Like in the first one, the airports and the airplanes were like just a plot device for mm-hmm. the drug mule and stuff like that. But the second one is literally like kind of visually representing their feelings and like their flight nature like their yeah. destination their goals and stuff like that do cut to planes pretty often just yeah, like yeah flying over and everything mm-hmm. that one shot i was like considering the budget i was like oh damn they got lucky but like remember <laughs> I, I forgot what it was but it was like the clothes hanging yeah the clothing and then like the plane flew over i was like yeah yeah good good for <laughs> good you shot. you talk about the colors yeah oh, the colors are fantastic I love the use of colors yeah it's like super saturated greens blues some reds and stuff like that it's yeah. it's like it's it has like a certain calm feeling, but also like aggressive to it too. Yeah, like uh, he he used a mix of of greens and yellows too in certain yeah. scenes, which is that's a hard color combination to pull off because yeah. they're not exactly complementary. No, colors. they're like they're like they <laughs> fucking combat each other and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, the scene inside the bar when he's like uh, trying to flirt with her about like pineapples and stuff, the use of color there like is it's <laughs> yeah. beautiful. Man. Out of context, yeah. that's a really funny sentence. <laughs> yeah, when he's trying to flirt with her about pineapples. <laughs> yeah. and then, like, the apartment. <laughs> was like mostly blue right i think like when uh faye was like oh yeah she yeah. was like she was adding the color and the blues yeah. to it and it was, i thought it was nice yeah and then like, yeah. to put her own picture there too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> later he looks at it like what <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a picture yeah. where did that come from and then like for, i think for him it's like blue and red are like the colors of love or something like that it's like or at least like it's, it's a little different in the move for love but actually which uh, for this one, which versions you guys watch? You watch the original version or the international? I watched on the, the cr- Criterion channel what yeah. was listed as the alternate. Yeah, then that's yeah, yes, also, that's, that's also what I but watched. But it also said yeah, that's the original, right? That's the because well, I'm, well, I read the description. And it said the, the how natural. it was originally presented. Because that's I think how that we, was the uh, in the mood for love though. That wasn't Chunking Express. No, no, no that, that was Chunking, chunking well. too. Because that's um, they, they both said like said alternate that, versions. Yeah, because um, we got because our. We got the international version theatrically. So okay. that's why that's why I said that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually the version he prefers. You know what I mean? Okay. And the Hong Kong version. I prefer version, it too. Yeah. The <laughs> Hong Kong version, the dreams play twice. The dreams actually plays in the first chapter or somewhat. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm glad it doesn't. Because yeah, <laughs> it felt way more appropriate in the second one. Yeah, and it's a little longer, the the, the version itself. Like, they expand the uh, the immigrant storyline in the first one a little bit more and stuff like that. Mm. Which I yeah, I saw it was like a minute and a half longer. Yeah. And, you know, what do you guys think of the... Okay, so what do you guys think about, like, you know, pacing and the editing? You know, even, like, the structure. Like, do you guys feel like, you know, it was disjointed with his uh, die big narrative structure? Did it feel disjointed with, like, you know... How rapid, you know, the shots were, how fluid it was. It was more based on no, emotions. I, that, or no, it I, just do it a lot. I I think this is a nearly perfectly paced film. I would um, agree. And no, nothing was distracting. Nothing took me out of the experience. I genuinely just enjoyed it the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. I watched it twice the same day, just because like the I first time I watched it through, I was like, this is great. And then later, Rosie came by. I was like, you know, let's watch this again. I just, yeah. I really want to watch it again. And I, I know you'd like it. So I'm like, it was, it was perfectly paced. Yeah. Like you said, it, it didn't, all the, both stories felt like they flowed so well and they just meshed really well into each other. Like you could, you could make the argument, maybe they could be two separate movies, but I'm like, nah, it doesn't it work. No, no, right. it works I do kind of wish just because I love the characters so much, there's like a little more in there. There's a sequel coming out. Is there really? What? Yeah. He wrote the sequel like a while ago. But you know, just well, no that funding. doesn't matter to him. Yeah, but then like he just like he somehow got funding. They're filming it like well, there was a film this year. Uh, Same actors year. and everything. The thing is, he's keeping it very under wraps. We okay. don't know if this is like just another story within like Midnight Express, mm-hmm. and or just in the same uh, plaza, or it's actually gonna. Uh, expand the stories for some of the characters okay like interesting that. i'd be it, cool either way honestly it, yeah. it's funny enough it, it gives me a, a train spotting kind of feel yes. to it like yeah the definitely first one. Yeah. and now that's coming out the sequel like 20 years later it, <laughs> it almost fits perfectly yeah. into have that you seen train spotting too i have not seen the second not, one it, it, no it's, it's, it's an interesting take i'll say that i'll say that mm. i would love to do if if whenever the chunky express 2 comes out and we compared that to Train Spotting too. I would love to just talk about yeah. that. that if we're thing. pairing movies just based off of like, you know, if you like this, you'll probably like this. I feel like, you know, a lot more people maybe in at least Western audiences have seen Train Spotting. Yeah, yeah. be like, you know what? You'd like Chunking Express. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like, tra- I, I, I'll say this. If you like Train Spotting, you'll definitely like tra- Chunking Express. But if you like Chunking Express, I don't necessarily think you'll like Train Spotting. Though, even though I love Train Spotting, I mean, uh, they're similar yeah. in this many a, ways. Yeah. Like, the, the the chaotic nature of yeah. both films and how the way, they both, the way they both start. Yeah. yeah. Just like running instantly. Yeah. 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 I, I, I could say that Chunking Express is a little bit more, what's it called? And I say, I, I like, I love both films, but like Chunking yeah. Express is a little bit more. Definitely, like, even though they're both dark subject matter, a little lighter, surprisingly. And like, not oh, as yeah, much horrifying. It's definitely sequences. lighter. Like, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no dead babies in it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, there's there's like, one in the background. He's, yeah. he's, he's crawling on the ceiling. He missed it. Uh, what's he can't put one in, in his apartment. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, oh, just the color, the composition, the framing. Uh, what's it called? Um, I remember when I first watched it, it was like in like it was like in film school, and then we watched the film reel and stuff. It, it, it was even more like it purposely looks a little bit more um, dreamlike in that one. Like mm. I know this one has a 4K pass to it, so like it's a little bit more clear in details. But then mm. that kind of like dreamlike aspect of it, where you don't see much details in the skin, kind of added to that, you know, oh, like almost your vision vibe to it. So I, especially yeah. when the power went out and they're yes. lighting the candles, the way that the <laughs> yeah you didn't pay things. the electricity. <laughs> yeah, you didn't pay. <laughs> like damn it, I told you to like pay it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I love that the way that yeah. the um the light was kind of just like uh, I don't know. I guess like uh, I'm sure they had some oh yeah, kind it's of like ND it's a, filter or something on there. Yeah. Oh fuck, I forgot what this called, but it's like it, it purposely is like a little bit. More blown. I know, like um, certain type of lenses do that really well. I think it's a, is it anamorphic lens that does that like, a little better? I if you remember what kind of lens, or you yeah. know what kind of lens, just just is, put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Yeah. Let us know. Um. Okay. So let's kind of okay. Just before we wrap this up, what do you guys think about the? Okay. So your favorite performances. The our four leads are Takeshi uh, Kaneshiro, who is a Japanese Taiwanese guy, who which I, I thought was interesting. They casted him as um cop. Uh, Two, cop two, two, three. two cop two two three and because you know he he visually also looks distinct from the other people mm-hmm. you know and uh, even his uh his, like mandarin and Canto- <laughs> yeah, know, his mandarin and cantonese is uh it's also and, and shanghainese is different from the other people clearly yeah. and um i don't know if that's a conscious choice or just because popular just fit for the role um and then bridget lynn who plays the blonde tony leong who plays cop 663 and faye who plays faye Faye is like, oh yeah, brief background. She is one of China's biggest, like she's their Beyonce, pretty much. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she's like, like, but she can act. Yeah, I know she can yeah. act. She, <laughs> they she converted. Actually, this is like um, after this, he he casted more like non actors or like non 
like celebrity non actors into his films, but didn't necessarily work as well as this one. He okay. got caught. He's like, I can do that with anybody. And the next <laughs> film, he's like, uh, let me go back to Tony Leung. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Yeah. What do you guys think of them? And did uh, Faye being a pop star and stuff like that and like non acting? Did you guys, could you guys tell or did that kind of no, work? No, I had, yeah. I had no idea she was she was not like an an actor by profession. Yeah, um, um, she was she was really good. She killed it. My favorite would probably be Cop Two Two Three. I don't know. I guess I just connected with the story more. But I, I just yeah. I, I thought he really sells like this sad pathetic loser but that's also is kind of like a representation of hope too like it's it's kind of a i don't know i thought his performance was really good it really worked for me yeah it's like um i jog so i can't uh, yeah I water in my body to cry i was like oh, i love that yeah i was like yeah. yeah i feel i feel just as oppressed as you man i was like <laughs> yeah. i get it um yeah no i i thought everyone was really good obviously i think tony leong was fantastic um and I think he gave the best performance in the film. I felt a lot more growth from him right. uh, than Very any subtle. other character. Yeah. yeah, but like you could definitely tell by the end that he has progressed as a human being. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It's really hard for me to say, honestly. I might say Faye, just because like, the energy that she brings to it is just, I think, really what seals it. Yeah. Uh, like If that had been almost anybody else, I don't know if she would have brought that same no. level of like of innocence and kind of like you know wanderlust that she really yeah. uh, brings fantastic uh yeah i'll, I'll say Faye. john uh, krasinski would have been great in that role too uh, she when, when when he finds the hair in the uh, fucking bed he would be like ah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know oh gosh um for me oh god it's hard um honestly it's weird i even though i i think the male actors did a fantastic job and then amongst the two i don't know it's i would lean a little bit more towards Tony Leung because like how subtle it was, but Takeshi uh, kind of show fantastic as cop two, two, three. I, I think I might have to go with Ron on Faye. I was, I was almost about to say Bridget, but then like her character, what's called didn't get enough to do to quite put it on top of everybody else. Yeah. She yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. Like it really yeah. is like all these four actors like knocked out of the park. Like, you know what they yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all the people of the Chunking Express sequel, I would probably be most interested in like, her, her oh definitely yeah like i felt when it switched over like the story wise i obviously really liked the transition but i was just like no like bring them back yeah, you like let me, let me see it's what like happened yeah, yeah. yeah i was like yeah. let me see what the fuck happened to them but uh i don't know it still works I, I like the fact that you know they were in my life and now they're gone yeah like just like the movies yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it called? I, I maybe maybe Barry Jenkins makes uh like a Chunking Express remake or something. I, if anyone can make a re- remake, it'll be Barry Jenkins. So. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Babe, don't do that. No, I, mean, I wouldn't do it, but like, if they're, I mean, he'll probably like set it in like Harlem or something like that. It's like his own. It's not even a remake, actually. That was like a spiritual thing. But uh, don't, but don't do it. You're you're already you're already treading on on waters by doing a uh, Lion King prequel sequel. Yeah. Yes, you are, Barry. Come on, don't fuck it up. I liked your Underground Railroad series. Um, okay, so let's get to final thoughts and opinions. I mean, opinions, we pretty much said it, but like, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's start off with you, Blake. I mean, obviously, it's going to the shit bucket. Um, <laughs> I I want to put it in the museum, but I don't put museums upon first watch. But definitely on the shelf, and it's definitely in route to the museum. I already want to watch it again, which is like not my style. Even movies I love, I'm like, that's great. I'll watch it again in a year. Um, but I loved it. But it was great. It's on the shelf. It'll be in the museum soon, probably. Yeah, I echo that as well. Um, I just, I just loved how, how honest the film said or mm-hmm. felt. Um, it's rare for me to connect with characters, especially characters that have like, you know, half a movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was, I was able to connect to all of them in a really personal level. Um. Which, you know, for a movie like this, I think that is the most important thing. Yeah. And it nailed it. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely on the shelf. Um, I could see it with a couple more rewatches going into the museum. Um, I'm going to just put it in the museum. <laughs> oh. uh, I feel like it's it, if, if a movie that's going to put in the museum, I feel like that's a movie I would recommend to pretty much anybody in that I think that you probably should watch, right? Yeah. Like if I was making a list of movies that you should definitely watch before you die, this is one of those, like, just yeah. you know, watch it, you know, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's well done. It's uh, masterfully told. And yeah, it's, a, it's, it 
struck all the good chords. <laughs> no, I I agree that I right, I'll just say, say it straight up. Yeah, museum museum for me. I mean, like um, it's like it's one of the Wong Kar Wai films I just like kind of revisit a little bit more often, or also just like just I don't know. It just hit it just hit me. It just like the visceral impact of the film. It's like the burgeoning film scene. It was like fuck. I was like jizzing in my pants while watching it and stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, oh, this is what films are. Oh! And it was, <laughs> I was like, and, and, and you know, it, this and then we'll get into another one. Um, and that's why I soft spot for these films, especially in the mood for love. Yeah, it's in museum for me. It's uh, what's going. And then, you know what Jason was talking about earlier of like. How it feels so real and honest and raw. I think all parts of it has to do with this is because, um, like Wong Kar Wai himself is like very like eccentric, uh, lonely guy. He's um maybe has depression or something like that. <laughs> um, but also quirky at the same time. And I feel like all these characters are different pockets of Wong Kar Wai's personality, and and also having a set like in like places where he grew up or where he visited. And like specifically like Hong Kong and like the rapid and changing, which we'll see in in the move for love, mm. kind of give every a lot of his film like this personal touch to it. Yeah. That I, and then and 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 then it's it's a it's like a really cool micro microscopic view on like a subculture that not many people see. And yeah. That's, that's what I love. Those are my favorite types. So yeah, in the museum. All right. So our next film is drum roll, please. Transformers: The Last Night. Boom! Exactly. The masterpiece Transformers The Last Sight. Directed by good old Michael Bay. It's about two people and two robots fucking each other. <laughs> it's no. about how Megatron and Optimus find out their spouses are cheating on each other. <laughs> so they kind of start hanging out and acting it out, you know. It gets really, really dramatic. I was yeah. like, whoa, is this the right movie? Exactly. Yeah, and and seriously then intimate, you know, between yeah. the two robots. Is, I thought what like... Michael Bay did with colors was, like, really interesting. Yeah, they, yeah. they took out a gear from the arm and then... <laughs> <laughs> and we saw all the intricate details of Megatron's body. The way they slowly <laughs> caress the all spark, I was like, wow. Oh <laughs> my god. Oh yeah. And then you have Shia LaGouf going like <laughs> oh god, rubbing him, you know, his, Sometimes his crotch on not him. always ready for love. <laughs> but it comes. Uh, oh, come? Alright, no, it's uh it's in the mood for love. Alright, it's a a two thousand uh Wong Kar Wai film and what's it called? And it's uh fantastic. Alright. A uh, brief synopsis for the film, In the Mood for Love, is, is so after discovering their respective uh, spouses have been having an affair with one another, Sue and Chao reenact their affair without consummating it. During this reenactment, they bond through their mutual interest in short story writing, food, and shared heartbreak. This initially foreign friendship through heartbreak becomes a burgeoning romance that suffers under the scrutiny of 1960s China, particularly Ajumas or like, you know, older Asian ladies. Yeah, they play Mahjong. Yeah, which is a big... <laughs> yeah, is a that, big, in the yeah. next film we're going to talk about. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, it's I the used same to, game, right? They yeah, play... Yeah, yeah. Let's go. I used to play a Mahjong as a kid because my grandpa forced me, but I forgot now no one plays Mahjong here. I used to play Mahjong, but like, um, I think it was with the Windows, like computer. Yeah. Like it had Mahjong on there and I used to play it a lot. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It yeah, I, had, fun um, I had no idea like what that was. I thought it was like... <laughs> I don't know, like Scrabble or something. What? <laughs> you never yeah, heard of Mahjong? I, I think I've seen it in other movies, though, actually. Well, the, uh, Crazy yeah, Rich Asians, that was like a plot point, too. Yeah, <laughs> really? she like yeah. beats the mom at the end, and that's like a big With the Mahjong, right? yeah, yeah. I, I got, I, I'm, I'm probably, actually, after seeing these last two films, like, I'm like inspired to do Mahjong again or something. Go to like those old Korean spas. We'll and... have Mahjong nights, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's like bringing it in. I wonder if that's how they, that when they see like, uh, Western cinema when you were like playing poker all the time, like they're always playing that game. We've played yeah, yeah. Oh no, I mean no, dude. dude poker's East, everywhere. Though. Eastern people shit on poker. I mean they like poker, but they're just like, yeah, this is boring. Because to be honest, mahjong, the cards, or even like um, our Koreans have this uh, certain type of like our our version of the cards. There's like uh -huh. these insane, like very intricate drawings on each card and stuff like that represents different things, and it's uh, they they shit on us hard. They're like fucking Western, you basic ass taste and lose some motherfuckers. Whatever, dude. <laughs> though I like poker. I really like poker. You guys want to play Go Fish? What's it called? I've, I've like learned how to play poker like three separate occasions, and I, I still don't know how to play poker. <laughs> I, can, I can do Texas Hold'em kind of like straight poker. I'm like, uh... Yeah, I'm like, I, you have to explain it to me 
every time we're gonna play. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'll play that time, and then next time I'll it's out one year. You yeah, know? <laughs> I'm not I'm not good at it. But one time I was playing Texas Hold'em with a couple of friends, and they were like super into it. They were talking about like, well, you know, like strategizing, and I fucking kicked their asses. And I <laughs> so good. Yeah, that's so good. I'm not I'm not a big fan of like card card players, but when I do play them, I get invested. <laughs> but, um, but it's got maybe because like I like 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 as a kid I played Mahjong and or I mean it's not the same but board games and stuff like Warhammer and shit. Number mm. sorry. Yeah, what's it called? <laughs> yeah. All right. So my favorite card game. <laughs> it's a board game. All right. So um, you know, brief background on the film. This is um actually a Lucy. This is actually uh the second film in the trilogy in the mood for love. It's just, okay. this is a loose sequel to his 1990 film uh, Days of Being Wild. They have mm. the same characters like Sue. Uh, Sue, um, who was uh, Su Li Zhen, was the main character of the first film, and uh, Chow was in the last minutes of the first film as an unnamed character who's a gambler. And they were going to make a sequel, but because that film made money, but not that much money, and he had a hard time financing, and there's a whole thing with you know Hong Kong and his transition of power and stuff like that, and the government thing. So, financing was really shit, and you know, so as a result. He couldn't make a direct sequel to Day of Days of Being Wild, so he kind of made this instead. Okay. Um, and it, it was it's, it's a really thing. And this is actually and there's a sequel to this film, a loose sequel, another one, very informal trilogy called Twenty Forty Six, which is oh yeah yeah which that, is, that's one I was looking at. I'm like I want to watch that next. That one's that one's fantastic. I w- I would definitely recommend uh, Days of Being Wild before because a lot of that okay. kind of ties in and stuff. Some characters from that one show up in uh, Twenty Forty Six. Gotcha. Um. Twenty and you know I think that's like the name of the room that they they rented and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, time. I saw twenty forty six was yeah. like on his yeah. hotel room or apartment. He developed uh, both films at the same time. Well, yeah, okay. and then hence why like they have so much connective tissue. Mm. Even like some footage that was on the cutting room floor for this one ended up in twenty forty six because they shot so much shit <laughs> <laughs> that they are able to transition into. Um, and also that's why in the, al- did you guys watch the alternate version or did you watch the original? I know alternate the first time version. you watched the original, right? Uh, yeah, that, I think I just watched the original again. Yeah. Or maybe not. Uh, I, th- I don't remember. I think maybe the alternate, the, the second time, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I just watched <laughs> the first one that popped up. On the <laughs> I think it said channel. the alternate version as Which, seen in theaters. No, I, I, I watched the, the one theaters, without yeah. the green tint. I'll say yeah. that. Well, the thing I watched is, it with the green tint. The weird thing is you don't notice the green tint while watching it. You only notice it in comparison. Okay. and stuff like yeah. that and it actually kind of adds like a weird nostalgic tone to it mm. yeah, like, yeah. I, I liked it yeah. i thought it worked and then it also brings it closer to 2046 which has a huge green tint to mm. it okay. yeah yeah so that's probably why like that was a, and if you watch the deleted scenes like completely un, unfiltered it has a green tint okay. like back in the day so but, but i do like the original version that had like the colors pop out a lot like the reds and stuff mm-hmm yeah, and then so like it was originally developed as a summer in Beijing. He wanted a film with a more 20th century urban setting in contrast to his Ashes of Time, a Wushu epic. Um, and, you know, it was going to be very similar to uh, Chunking Express. It was going to have three stories and stuff like that. And one of the stories mm-hmm. was um, a story of food where two people share secrets over noodles, which in that is in too. this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he even told journalists that this film would be a musical and a love story. Can you imagine in the mood of <laughs> for love and musical? No. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> Just like, no. can you just imagine? Just like your husband's fucking my wife. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> my wife is getting fucked by your husband. Mm, mm. We're in the I'm mood sure for they would love. Use that exact. That's kind probably of for yeah. too, right? That's that's for <laughs> and what the lyrics would be. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then, but you know, he just said like this is just way too many stories and stuff like that. So he just decided to focus on the the noodle the noodle story. Mm. Um, and, and thank God, you know, was, to be honest, was that like. Did that happen during the editing process? Oh, or? No, 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 that happened before they shot it. Okay. Yeah, and then he, I was he couldn't even... say if there's two other movies out there. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Because he couldn't even uh, make it in summer in Beijing because, like I said, because of the political climate with Hong Kong and, you know, the end of the hundred years or just the, like the British occupation thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, they were just like, yeah, we can't do the Beijing. Well, I, I read, I don't know if this is true, but I read that they had to switch to another country at some point. Yeah, yeah, they did. Because, um, because also Hong uh, Kong was they, just... they were asking for a script so he could prove he was making yeah. a movie. And he's like, oh, I have a script. Yeah. And so <laughs> they had to move. That's, that's, what, um, that's another reason why he has a hard time making films now. Because uh, the Chinese uh, film board is like very strict and they're, you know, like, like you know, a certain amount of money can be spent on films. And so like a script will be an indication that you have a plan. One mm. car wise, like <laughs> <laughs> no script. 
Um, <laughs> so, just cackles in the corner. Do <laughs> you imagine him directing like a Marvel movie or something? I would <laughs> love that. It would take three to eight years to make. Yeah. yeah. But then it would just like be this probably the best ever. <laughs> Kevin Feige sweating bullets like, like I don't know what yeah. to do. I'm five million in. He's <laughs> yeah. sweating. It'd be about like sweating. Thanos dealing with like a breakup or something. <laughs> yeah. Like oh yeah, like I would actually see that. Like Thanos comes yeah. back, he's dealing with breakup with that. Yeah, yeah. no, that'd be great. Honestly, yeah. the only way that like I think Marvel movies are really going to be able to expand and move forward is doing those kinds of movies yeah. where it's like get personal get in there get into like those emotions yeah. and stuff you know? yeah that's why guardians 2 is so great oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, fucking, one. He's, he's even like like kevin by you sweating through like eternal he's like oh my gosh we're not shooting in front of a green screen we're going to <laughs> actual locations <laughs> Flug, we're not only shooting in atlanta georgia you know <laughs> <laughs> um so, <laughs> So I, you know, it's 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 weird, yeah. So they shot in um some of the locations. They went to like Bangkok, uh, Thailand. That was one of the countries. Uh, mm. in Singapore, and then for the final shot, they went to um Cambodia, uh, Angkor Wat, which is beautiful, by the way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Like all countries, I like. I was like, oh, I want to go. Maybe Bangkok it's, definitely with someone who knows how to speak Thai. But it yeah. somehow felt like the only outdoors scene because like everything else was like like so wrapped up in the cityscape, and you know mm-hmm. everything felt like such tight alleyways and like such tight indoors you yeah know, it like, was very like, claustrophobic the way that was framed and stuff and then once he's actually outside it felt like oh i can almost breathe but <laughs> yeah. i feel like crying but like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like i can breathe because even like while they were shooting um in hong kong mm-hmm. like hong kong was modernizing so fast and that was part of, that's part of the worst into narrative that like some of the streets that they were shooting that looked like 1960s hong kong they couldn't shoot anymore because they were already renovating the walls wow so they that's when hence you know and also because of the script <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's another thing and then um and this whole film like he shot for 15 fucking months that's insane yeah. like total commitment that's um and that's this is the the shoot that that fucked his relationship with christopher doyle the um oh yeah the yeah, british yeah. chinese guy <clears throat> he's like constant collaborator on car Wai, and uh, he had to lose his shit early because he's like he lost i think he, said he lost like eight or nine jobs because he didn't know like when this would be finished yeah. Then, so did he finish the film or no? No, he, he, had, he had to get a new. He, he left. Yeah, he left. Cinematographer. And, yeah, he got a new cinematographer, uh, Mark Lee uh, Ping Bin. Yeah, working in film, I can't imagine someone taking over a year of yeah. your time, being like, "Yeah, we're gonna work on this one project." And Thank it's like, you God better be paying me great. consistently yeah. throughout that entire fucking yeah. thing. It's like, cause yeah, he's passing on jobs all the time. That yeah, that adds up, man. It like, does. It does. <laughs> so I gotta say though, if it if it if it makes like. A, like a masterpiece like this yeah then okay it's probably worth it in you know in, 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 the, long <laughs> in the long term, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, the it's worth term. it it's worth it for the sake of art but is it worth it for the sake of the finances the, <laughs> yeah. the finances and the people in someone's working. career yeah and yeah. someone's yeah. career and someone's yeah. working conditions but this is his most cited film so like yeah, yeah, yeah it's this, true. This, this like, in the end yeah when people look back when <laughs> work and they're like yeah if that's the thing that they always reference from and yeah. get jobs for in the future then yeah you know it might just be worth it ultimately he's also the cinematographer let me double check for yeah, he was also a cinematographer for Hero. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so awesome. good for him. He was his yeah, stuff afterwards. Oh, yeah. Hero's beautiful. Yeah. Didn't take 15 months to shoot. But, <laughs> but um, and then, but Mark Lee P. Bing, he's also a famed DP for, um, you know, I think the film I called, uh, talked about earlier, A City of Sadness, mm-hmm. where uh, Tony Lim plays like a deaf um, photographer during yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. Taiwanese Revolution. Um, Ho Xia Shen, that was like, he was a DP for that. And Ho Xia Shen's films are also very beautiful. It came out with a film called Assassin. Definitely recommend. Um, yeah, so you know, good cinematographers, and because, and it still looks seamless because a true cinematographer is not either of these guys. It, it's Wong Kar Wai. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's just like, he's like as exact vision of what he wants. <laughs> but yeah, the sour Christopher Doyle never worked. Um, he tried working with him in twenty forty six, but also that film shot for almost a year. So, so as a result, Christopher Doyle left and never worked with Wong Kar Wai. Guys, great with deadlines. Yeah, <laughs> no, then yes, that's it was terrible. Um. And Maggie Chung, she retired four years after this film. She said this is the high point of her career. And she's like, I don't really need to do afterwards. She had to be pulled in to do Hero and a couple other stuff. And that's it. Oh, wow. Oh, she was in Hero? Yeah, yeah. She's the main lover. Oh. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, I think she was Snow? I think so. Because like, uh, what's it called? Never mind. Well, Never mind. Um, Tony Leung was, was he Broken Sword? Oh, God, they have such weird names. Uh, I think, I I imagine, I think he's right? the dude that like, uh, uh, like he's the one who wrote it's... the like One Country. 
Yeah, yeah. right. Like he's writing. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Which is our next week's film. You know? I'm yeah. aware. That's good. <laughs> Wait, sorry. I have to make this joke real quick. City of Sadness. What is that? Charlie Kaufman's house. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> uh-huh. Okay. All right. Moving on. <laughs> um, there's a lot of sound effect in post. Yeah. <laughs> With the drums. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're talking about deadlines, Blake. Did this guy, like, because they had to release it in cans or no one. This would, film part would have never been released. Because that's how you generate buzz for these type of, you know, films. Yeah. So... He he uh finished it one hour before it was screened. <laughs> and then, wow. And then even like when people want to see it early, he was only at the show like like two minutes of at a time. And then when like a distributor asked, like, can I see some films like if I put financing in it, right? Yeah. Wanna, he he was able to show them like maybe the diner scene, that's it. And they were like, Same, Okay, we'll man. we'll give you um wow, this looks great. He's like, Yeah, the film's complete. Bullshit. Yeah. But, and, he, and he's like, We'll give you US distribution. Yeah, nowadays yeah. they're like, All right, we need this movie done in like two months like or actually we need it in two weeks well actually we need like it's insane like the time periods that people have to make movies now and just crank them out yeah and then in a weird way kind of affects the quality but sometimes it works it depends on the plan and the planning and, yeah it yeah. really depends yeah it really yeah, it depends, depends. like moonlight efficient. for example was, that was shot, shot in like, like what? three weeks yeah. or something yeah no well, yeah. Well, yeah yeah something like that but then like you know that had a huge plan influence all that stuff mm-hmm. yeah and then um it's, it's it's really interesting. for a guy who was influenced by Wong Kar Wai, he, he, he kind of took like a lot of like his strengths, you know. Not you'd say. <laughs> yeah, what's it called? Um, I, I agree Moonlight would still be being filmed right now if you took. Out- <laughs> 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 it's, cool. it's, it's in, in 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 a way it kind of works because like you know Wong Kar there was no Wong Kar Wai before Wong. Kar- I mean, there's I guess John Luke Godard, but that's very different, right? Like, there's no Wong Kar Wai. There was no such thing as Wong Kar Wai before Wong Kar Wai and. Mm-hmm. And so I guess like Barry Jenkins, you know, took that stuff. Like if you look, like there's a video of Wong Kar Wai and Barry Jenkins, like his shots line, they're like almost identical, but in a good way. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, he was in a new context. Um, but yeah, that's that's the thing. It's a wild ride. It finally got made, and um, it won a bunch of fucking. It won a bunch of fucking awards. Like uh, in 53rd Films Count Festival, it won two awards: Tony Leung for Best Actor, Christopher Doyle. Uh, Lee Ping Bin and William Chang for technical grand prize. By the way, William Chang, which we'll get into, he's the MVP of all Wong Kar Wai shit. He does the costume design, production design, and the editor. All one guy. Wow. And what's it called? He's. I, I probably think that's that's the one guy where like uh, very different jobs too. I know. That's not, that's not yeah, like yeah. you know. Wong Kar Wai is like I. I want to shoot um like a hotel with like red curtains and on top of that the ground has to be red with like little green linings and it has to be a cool shot and it has to be like at least six doors down and then you see William Chang going oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> but then it lost it got nominated for Palm Dior Palm Dior and it could have won but it lost to fucking Dancer in the Dark by Lars von Trier like fuck that film was shot with like no production I, I like that film to a certain extent you know Bjork did good and stuff like that but really over this film over yeah. this film I have not seen Dancer in the Dark. I have also not seen Dancer in the Dark. <laughs> but I I mean I think this movie's a masterpiece, so that's I'm I'm you haven't seen it. it was it was not even nominated for Best Foreign Film for the Academy Awards. This that one? Yeah. Fun, yeah, it was not. Ouch. They, they just like <laughs> went on across Indeed. it. Indeed. And, and then and then I don't know if it's because like cause Crouching Tiger, that was the Crouching Tiger Crouching Tiger came out the same year, mm. which was like it's super competitive. And if we look at the Hong Kong Awards, like it was a big battle between these two films and stuff like that. But, you know, The Couch Tiger was from Taiwan and this and this one would be from Hong Kong. So, like, you could technically do two fucking things. And those are the two best fucking foreign language films. So why can't you have two fucking Asian films in one year? I'm sorry, Academy. It's not... It's okay to have two yellows on one category. Okay? Ugh. It's too many Asians, though, you know. Yeah, my gosh. Next thing you know. God knows how many French films will be nominated one year. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. So, you know, my brief rant about this film. I mean, even though it's highly regarded as classic, but I felt like it got fucking gypped, you know, during the time. Well, it's, yeah. I feel like I mean, people know of it more. Yeah. yeah. Like, it stood the test of time. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about Dancer in the Dark or the... Uh... Dancer in the Dark. That's, it's, it's I not mean, that's a pretty well regarded movie, yeah, though. Yeah, it's good, but it's nowhere near this film. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even like just just look at a frame of Dancer in the Dark because he had this weird, stupid Dogma 95 movie where he's like, oh, my films will be Aussie because no lights. 
No, no, no camera movies. But it's a great no Lars von Trier impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, by the way, Hitler, I understand Hitler. I understand his motivations. <laughs> Should we he explain to the that. audience that that's Lars von Trier's famous like statement? Is he sitting next to Kirsten Dunst? Yeah, Kirsten yeah, Dunst. Said that. He's and like, she's Hitler. just like, the, the fuck. Best, the best part of that video isn't what he said it's her just like oh no <laughs> she's like Lars what are you doing <laughs> yeah like he's a weird guy who was like I I, I like sim- he said I sympathize Hitler with hands of pretty statements or who, said, understand Hitler yeah understand <laughs> Hitler or something like that uh, and then he like he fucking I don't know like and then he like destroys the females for having sex or something in Nymphomaniac it's it's a weird, it's he, a weird well guy. have you ever listened to Lars von Schur say anything nothing ever comes out good yeah. <laughs> like he always comes off as like a pretentious douche um yeah. He's okay, I, and I, I know I like Jason has a is. fucking. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Yeah, okay. Jason is not like Lars von Trier. What's it called? Okay, so you don't want to see Willem Dafoe's giant cock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, not just his cock. Best oh, thing gosh. he's ever done. Yeah. Nymphomaniac two giant cocks. If there's one move I'm interested in, though, it is Antichrist. Not breaking the waves. Yeah, I would say. Oh, like, maybe breaking the waves. Of the movies that I've, I've heard of him. Because uh, I haven't seen any of his, so I don't know. I can't really say that's much. Fine. <laughs> but Antichrist is the one that's really stood out to me. And there's a Melancholia, the one with like the planet. Melancholia. That's the one I, oh, I haven't yeah, seen it. I really too. want to see it. My friend Sam or our friend Sam loves. Okay, friend Sam. Yeah. We're not talking about Lars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. So the opening uh, inner title is like you know it's pretty interesting. It opens up. It has red. The dun 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 dun, like you know the classic. I uh, love the, the, that fucking track. It's amazing. And yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. I love it. Because it's in the whole fucking movie. <laughs> I know. It works. It works. Uh, it yeah. works. The music in straight. general just is fucking... Uh, yeah, yeah it it's always be, on point. The, the use of Nat King Cole. It's the yeah. perfect, like, glued of this movie, I think. Because, like, this mm-hmm. movie, you know, it's like jumping time periods and stuff at certain points. Yeah. I just really think that the music is really kind of what keeps, like, the ball rolling yeah. a lot of the time. And it's all... That song in particular is often playing, like, when the characters are being, like, introspective. And yeah. they're just, like, looking around and thinking about their lives. And it works really well. Uh, especially that one part in the track was, like, the strings, like... Mm, Mm-hmm. Like it's a better impression, but I was like, like that really str- like long string. I know what you're talking about. And it's like it's it's like I, I like start tearing up every time. I'm like yes, I I also feel depressed in your perspective when you do that. <laughs> Fuck yes. Um, but yeah, it's okay, about the opening the title. It's um, the, I won't. There's a little translation out there, but I won't read that. Um, but then the translation we get is it is a restless moment. She has kept her head fo- lowered to give him a chance to come closer, but he could not for lack of courage. She turns and walks away. I think that's like perfectly just sets up the like the mood and pace and like the feel yeah. of the, the film afterwards. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the film, you know? Yeah. What do you guys think of the opening and title? Did to choose it to open this way? No, to I think ones? it works. Yeah. What's it called? And yeah, it sets wh- the stage. Yeah. What's it called? And who which character do you think fits this better? Sue, Chow, or both? I think a bit of both, to be yeah. honest. Um, it, it explains like basically what's gonna happen in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it works. Do you guys prefer this type of opening for for this one, or do you like kind of like how Chunking was just like right into that? They're very show? different movies, which we should talk about in terms of like energy and pace. Yeah. So I think yeah, like the Chunking Express just comes out the gate like ah, and this movie was more like, oh, slow. I'm just gonna open the but thing. But completely happening. appropriate. Like yeah. it's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. the tone it's, it's, yeah. matches the film so it's well really, because yeah, it is. This it's, movie was more. S- somber yeah and, yeah and in a weird way this replaces kind of like the the inner monologues that chunking does mm-hmm. and this one like, very few almost none yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it just draws you into their performances and what they're feeling and you just have to imagine and maybe you know project what they're thinking yeah there, there is one scene that reminded me of chunking express and it's when they're moving in yeah like that whole scene kind of felt like a sad feast or safety brother yeah, the uh, like uh, the, everyone's moving around people are yelling over one another like it's just kind of like chaotic but you know exactly what's going on and you'd never feel lost it's a it's a really like it it really shows like okay things are changing here yeah right that was shot on the fifth month of production <laughs> 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 that's a good, I, I don't know if that's the case but i imagine probably yeah and then what do you guys, um, and what do you think of the setting in 1962 British Hong Kong? Do you think that was appropriate? Do you guys think it was a little odd choice or it was just unique or it didn't really matter? It didn't matter. It uh, felt like a great choice, I think. Yeah, just like yeah. culturally speaking, the, yeah. this time period, like really anywhere, divorce and dealing with like affairs mm-hmm. is like such a scandalous thing to deal with that like you can't scandalous. Yeah, you can't just go out and you, you can't really talk to a 
about it with other people and then these two people are just stuck and they only have each other and that's just what makes their relationship that much more um i don't know like just intimate and yeah close like they just like like who else am i gonna talk to this about? <laughs> yeah. my wife's cheating on me that's that fucking sucks with your <laughs> husband <laughs> with your yeah. husband yeah and i and i love that like okay so like you know immediately you know like let's say like, let's talk about the two characters um chao mo Huan is um a journalist in a shanghai ex, ex uh, expatriate who's like basically they're from shanghai and they moved to hong kong and shu li Xian is also from Shang- shanghai and she was a secretary to a shipping company very interesting jobs for this type of thing mm. and the shipping company kind of like once again the motif made from chunking express about transportation and like how like that you know res- resembles like the journey of love or something like that that he loves to do um very fitting um yeah it's like um it's it's, it's i think it's an interesting choice when you know that when you know we first get introduced to him we see them face clearly face to face but we never see the spouse right? yeah. yeah even like the scene where it's obvious like you know of like their spouses are fucking each other you just hear the crying of you know uh, child's wife yeah but then you don't and then you just hear the shower running and stuff because they're probably having sex in the shower or washing off whatever you know sex residue off their body <laughs> and then <laughs> um, and then and then they're just, and she's and she's crying uh, very interesting way to shoot it um and it, it kind of gives a more insular look at this relationship complete from their point of view yeah, um, how, how do you think that, that? Yeah. yeah, I thought it was kind of a genius way because the whole time you're waiting, like, when are, when's the big moment going to be? Like, the big, like, fight. But you never get it. It's just this quiet perspective from their point of view. And yeah, you don't even see their spouses. Yeah. Even though I know technically the movie obviously takes place more than just their, like, apartments, but it kind of feels like the whole movie takes place in their apartments mm-hmm. because yeah. of this perspective. Their apartment yeah, and their it, workplaces. It feels, yeah. it feels like a, you know... What's the word? Like a microcosm of society, that yeah. apartment. Like yeah. you know, you got the old ladies who are constantly gossiping, who I yeah. loved, by the way. Yeah. You and just go to it, Diamond Bar. That's it, like <laughs> it, it felt. It felt like a genuine community in there. Yeah. Um, and I like that a lot. It's like um, when it, it's like I get PTSD whenever I see that scene because like that's like whenever um, when I go to Korea and I see my grandma play mahjong with other people. They'll be like, oh my gosh, did you hear about like uh, Mrs. Susie down the street? I mean, that, okay, it's a Korean name, but just for the sake. Like, <laughs> Mrs. You know, Susie. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's just like, mm, she had, she just like, I heard, you know, she was looking at this other guy and then the other guy looked at her and oh my gosh, they're possibly having an affair and oh my God, they're banned from this group, mahjong group from all time. Oh, <laughs> how despicable a woman her age. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like I watch this and I'm like I, I get like P, like I get PTSD from that. I was like, oh my gosh, uh, what's it called? It, it's it's interesting. Um, and then you know it's just like, and it, it's just a, like you know like compared to Chunking Express, which is a lot of uh, fluid camera movements, handheld, steady cam, and yeah. this one very like, stationary, yeah, very stationary, probably using dollies or like what's it called, or it was on a sticks, mm. or it's, like pans. It's a very beautiful movie. In like a completely different way. Exactly. Like in Chunking Express, it's more like I'd I'd describe that movie as like you're you're it's almost like the visual representation of like energy, right? Yeah. This very fluid. This is more like everything is like a painting. Mm. Um, but it's so gorgeous. Like yeah. I honestly I'm not even fucking around. I got like distracted by the main story several times just because I was kind of so engrossed and just looking at these images he was showing us and I'd actually have to go back and rewind and be like, Oh fuck. I know. I totally just missed like something mm. super important. Um, like my favorite shot of the movie is when like, she's visiting him in like the hotel with like the red. Curtain. Yeah. yeah. Like I couldn't even pay attention to the story for like a second. I was like, wow. Yeah, probably like, uh, just the use of framing. And oh yeah. Frames within Everything. frames, how they're like divided from each they're, other. Like yes. their work offices look fucking phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. The and then they frame everyone. I think probably, uh, my favorite shot just, using that kind of motif is when I, I don't remember the exact moment it is but like they're like sitting with next to each other but they're not really facing each other but you see their faces like on the reflection of like mirrors and is it yeah. something uh, else yeah is tony lee young is like it's he's through two separate mirrors yeah like yeah which is brilliant like and you just see like they they have this like this moment of again near intimacy something where this is like probably the moment where they could finally break and be close to each other and have that moment and it's they can't yeah and it's just it's just everything around their environment is literally not denying them that yeah ah, it's so well done and it's like and it, when you're talking about the frame within a frame like it's it also kind of like 
be beautifully talks like represents like visually represents the theme of like them being trapped by like certain expectations within society and yeah. like what's yeah. stopping them. Like I, I know like Nerdwriter did a video on it or something like they're like the first thirty minutes, like there's almost every shot is a frame within a frame. Oh yeah, that's, wild. And that's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And then I don't know if like, you know, he actually planned that way or fifteen months of production was like, let me only choose But it works. But um, yeah, I imagine he's got like miles of film yes. that he was just like str- like <laughs> just going through, just like fuck, right? Yeah. Like, oh, this is great! Like, yeah, <laughs> they took out the fight scene with Megatron. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be, oh my god, that would actually be funny. I love seeing the mood for love with in the mood for robot love. In a weird way, they're probably the the most passionate robot lovers out there, and you know, it's like, it's yeah, hard. they have a history. Yeah, <laughs> what's it called? Um. And then, um, yeah, it's like, and then, you know, there's even like, like, there's like a reference to, I think, Bergman's uh, persona, you know, like that famous shot of like one face is looking to like the right or something and one face is looking directly at the camera yeah, and the mm. face is like covering that face. And you kind of oh, get that yeah. with uh, like in, in their hotel where like Tony Leong is looking right and then in the background is Maggie and you got like this cool, like, I think like one of them has a green tint, one of them has a red tint and it's just like, <clears throat> it's a really cool look. It's like. Uh, yeah. heartbreaking <laughs> <laughs> this, this is for me one of the heart, most heartbreaking films to watch you know absolutely but like it's like you just want to see them together so badly <laughs> Rosie, like, Rosie's seen this too right yeah yeah, yeah. Th- this was another one where like uh, no no actually I think we watched this together at the same time but yeah. by the end of it Rosie was like she's like, I mean we're both kind of like just crying but like she's yeah. like you did not tell me this movie was going to end this way <laughs> and I was, uh, unfortunately I had been spoiled beforehand I knew that they didn't end up together oh, but like okay. it, just watching it even um, though like it, there's still that sense of like longing and everything want yeah i'm just like there, maybe there's some way right like there's got to yeah. be like some kind of silver lining here what i really it's thought the fucking post credit gonna... scene come on give me something <laughs> <laughs> like the chemistry is insane yeah <laughs> yeah Jimmy i'm here to it, it talk to you so about well. the depression initiative <laughs> um i thought they were gonna end up together i don't know maybe it's just the dumb optimist in my head i'm like ah oh, these crazy yeah i thought so as well like, and then no yeah like yeah yeah even knowing i was just still I was like, there's got to be, but there's there's an alternate thing. There's another thing, right? Where yeah, somehow there's an alternate yeah. version. Yeah. 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 Like, is it something? No, damn it. And yeah. it never. Well, I mean, there's there's hints that might have consummated. And we'll talk about like our theories on that, especially like whose kid that is that is at the end. Mm. Um, but that, like for the most part, we don't visually see it consummate ever. No. Yeah, we no. don't visually ever see it, which no. in, in a weird way makes it more like heartbreaking <laughs> like we don't ever see yeah. them actually like have sex or have kids or anything like or have sex or, or like kids just or, anything or like be able to just even be in a relationship yes. you know yeah, yeah. it's sad <laughs> without like old you know like asian ladies just like hmm. <laughs> even what's uh what's her name um ah oh, gosh what's um her name is the main uh, one, right, Swin, right? Miss Swin. What's the scene where she's coming or, back in? She's like, yeah, "Where are you? Yeah. It's so late." Oh, I uh, yeah, which, I, I was at work or something, and she was like, "I don't know. I didn't see you leave." <laughs> and, it's like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, I, oh God, I no, I can, no one else piece it together, like other than that too. That like their spouses are probably in, maybe not with each other. Like they, they mean they may not piece that they're having an affair with each other, but that they're probably having an affair considering they always go on business trips together and then, yeah, yeah. And then over time together and you know i just love how the way they bond too like chow and sue they write a fucking martial arts serial together yeah which yeah. ties into 2046 and that that now okay. comes to fruition that that, that that plot line pays off yeah oh god one day we'll, we'll watch that film that's this yeah i might watch it sometime this week honestly yeah, yeah. it's on it's on the criterion, on criterion yeah. yeah yeah these have been wild too it's actually on criterion I is think. it yeah, yeah. I, I i'm so interested to see more of this guy's movies yeah. for so, sure um, yeah uh i might go on a dive into his films i kind of want to buy the box set it's great it's since the chunking express fucking standalone blu-ray is out of print um, the criterion so and i was looking at it it as like a hundred dollars for one thing and a new new unsealed copy is like 200 something it's like insane so i'm probably just gonna have to buy the box set yeah gosh oof wonker why you fucking fanatics Fucking Blu-ray, you motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know they bond. Okay, and, and one of my favorite shots is, the, the, by the way, dumplings, dumplings and noodles. Like, yeah, that, that motif. Yeah, food, food, food is a huge thing. Like, uh, uh, one of my favorite like things in this movie is in the first like ten or fifteen minutes, she's multiple people ask her like, "Hey, let's get some food." Yeah. She always says no. 
until she's like, okay, I'm gonna, Tony Leung. I'm gonna have food with Tony Leung. Uh, I thought that was great because food, you know, is a, it's kind of an intimate thing. Yeah. Like sitting down and having a meal with someone. See your like, yeah. especially in like, yeah. uh, like Asian cultures, particularly in China. That's like, that's the main way people socialize. Cause like, like they're always out and about. And the only time they have to sit down and relax is food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And stuff like that. And then that's, and that's, that's a great way. And then it's like the one of like, uh, when she's like, it was a pork shallon bao or like some type of dumplings. Like that's one of my favorite shots, the hallway shot where it's like, you see her coming up and you see Tony Lynn going down and just holds on that kind of empty hallway oh, yeah. frame. Oh gosh, that's just like gorgeous. It's um it's 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 like it's insane. Like I mean, even I don't even know if like a film like this, not saying like a remake of this, but like this feeling and this cinematography could ever be replicated like into this level. It would be degree. very hard to do. Yeah, even like uh Barry Jenkins is like it's gonna take me like forty years for me to even touch something like this. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'll go make Lion King prequel cool, cool instead. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot. Well, okay. Um what what about you? What are your some of your favorite shots from the film? I know Ron, you mentioned um, you know, a couple a couple of the ones in the um Yeah, the that one. Stuff. I mean, I think like when they're standing in the rain under the umbrella, like it it, it was oh, yeah. one of the one that's like really devoid of color, ironically, because I yeah. think most of the color is just so fucking brilliant. Uh just the the use of reds and greens again, like yeah. all over the place were so well done. Oh, yeah, um, I didn't like Christmas. Think about it. Like when they said goodbye too, that's like in shadows and mostly colorless, so like yeah. wide and stuff. It, it's, it, yeah. Um, I don't know. A- any shot where Tony Young smoking a cigarette, like yeah, <laughs> I, yes. I was gonna say. Yeah, that's Tony Young. <laughs> uh, there's one shot in particular where it does like that lower shutter speed, but not nearly as oh, no, no. much. But like he's standing there smoking a cigarette, and I was just like, man, you look fucking cool dude <laughs> yeah. um, and that smoke that remember, like in, in his office right? yeah, yeah the smoke rises yeah yeah, yeah. Um, oh. also not like the flashiest shot in the movie or anything but like just when they're talking at the food and like the camera's just like panning whipping yeah, yeah, panning yeah. back and forth mm. to the two characters i just oh man i was like nice that, that was <laughs> yeah. a good shot and it was like the timing was too like it kind of brought energy yeah that's that no it and that was probably the most energetic scene in the movie aside yeah. from the moving yeah. in scene but it makes sense because that's the moment where they both realize oh fuck our We're spouses cucks. are fucking yeah like <laughs> and it's, um, it's interesting like when he does conversations he generally prefers not like to do over the shoulder or sort of shot reverse shot he mm-hmm. likes to do pans or he likes to do one takes or wide shots it looks so good too though yeah. like mm-hmm. captures a lot more too yeah i i agree with that it's um gosh it's like i mean just, almost throughout like most of the movie like it, it, i noticed that it's so rare to see both of their faces at the, the same, same time. time it's always just one or the other one or the other and it's just yeah. like you it's like you keep, you're just denying them seeing together again and it's like god just let me just see their fucking faces at the <laughs> yeah. same time and then kiss like it's like a doll's like as a child like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like just kiss already like, hey, that's good that's good that's a good pickup yeah it's like oh god it's like even visually yeah <laughs> that's separating us from them and then um and sadly like or the most prominent shot of them together is their goodbye and when you know she in the car, their final their yeah. final shot together, she puts her head on his shoulder, and then mm. and even like you know recurring images like in the first time she pulls her her hand away when Tony Leon puts it on top, but this time she lets it happen. Yeah, she lets it happen. Yeah. So now and then let's get into the, the the big theory. Do you guys think when Sue comes back at the end to the apartment, do you guys think that's Tony Leon's kid or her kid with her husband? I think it's her kid with her husband. I agree. I, I think like. The fact that we didn't get that, you know, we didn't get to see them um, together. I think it would kind of like ruin the whole movie for me. If, oh, oh, yeah. Like, because like the whole like emotional toll that that took on me would be gone and I didn't even get to fucking see it, you know? <laughs> like, right, right. Um, so I choose to believe that maybe she worked it out with her husband at some point and or they, they just had like a compromise where like we don't yeah. love each other but we'll fuck in once in a while to get a kid and then just like yeah, the yeah. I, I don't just, i think that's way more consistent with like the, the story that yeah. we were told yeah i also agree that i'm pretty sure it was with her husband i had a thought when i was watching it but i don't think so i think it's very important that they don't show them ever have sex and it's i, I don't think it happened I think that their relationship, or even fucking kiss, or like, really touch each other that much at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think that that's like such an important detail that their relationship is just completely based on like this: a) the circumstance that they both found themselves in, but b) how they've kind of 
Like it's almost like they're like giving each other therapy through a lot of the movie, right? Yeah, they're, they were they're acting it out. They're like, like, how would you break it off with your husband? Like mm. this and that. So I don't know. I I personally don't believe that it is his child. Same. Like as much as I wish it is, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I would wish that it was just for like them. The fact that they actually had to have that moment together. Um, I I don't believe it is. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that. I I, I was flopping in the beginning because, you know, timeline kind of matches and stuff. Yeah. And also, like, at the, they specifically make it a point where she doesn't, you know, one Chow separates from his wife at the end. And then, um, and also she... Good for him. You, yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. She, good for him. And she um comes back without her husband, you know, in mm-hmm. that place. We don't, but they don't necessarily say they separate. No, I, I mean, I think he's mentioned. Like Yeah, he is mentioned, yeah. Uh, where's your husband? Oh, he's abroad or something like that. Yeah, and he always be, fucking is. Yeah, but that can mean a lot shitty of Shitty fucking husband. Yeah, so it's I hate like, that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's um, so yeah, she but, deserves so much gosh, better, bro. man. She, she deserves Tony. Totally. <laughs> it's the like, best. It's um, you know, it's I, I I I would say it works better for the themes if that's not the kid. Yeah, yeah, and then um, but there is that one tragic moment. Oh, when because you, know, you know he went to Singapore at this point and got a job there. Yeah, but then like he comes back to visit and stuff, and then um, you know, also the theme of immigration comes in. You know, like Swan goes to like United States and they're all leaving mm-hmm. and everybody's changing, kind of like the oh, ever changing Hong Kong. Um, he looks at the door for a second, just like possibly thinking is is uh, Sue there, but then just walks away. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, just another like any any other director would have just had him actually open the door and be like, Sue, Chow." Yeah. <laughs> but then that was that I was yeah. hoping she would fucking go, man. Yeah. but didn't happen. And then and then, yeah, and then um, you know, and it ends with um, because you know, like, uh, and then his uh, friend talks about like you know going to like a mountain or a hole and just sp- speaking the secrets. And yeah, China. so he yeah. goes to Cambodia. Well, no, he talks about that, and his friend's like, why don't oh, you just get laid? It, yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, I love his friend, too. Ping! Like, Ping. I love Ping. He's just like, he's a Perverted man. <laughs> um, yeah, and then he, go, yeah, he goes to uh, see him re- uh, Cam- Cambodia, and he visits uh, Angkor Wat, like this, like... Uh, oh, and that's gorgeous, too, the yeah. shots at the yeah. end. And then, um, you know, he, there's like a little hollow, like, like spot in, uh, in this ruined wall or plugs, and he fills it with mud, and he, he speaks into it. Mm-hmm. And then... And that's pretty much what, like our final shots, and yeah. and it kind of leaves with us with like this kind of ponderous ending, right? And what, yeah. what do you guys think about the ending? What do you guys think from the last shot? What do you guys take away from it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, the whole setting was a little strange to me because it's completely different the from the yeah. entire movie. But I did like the fact that like he. Like when he was describing this to his friend, he he was basically saying, "This is how you release, you know, your your feelings, your emotions. You just put it in a hole and let it go." And so I think that's what he was doing. He's like, "It's been fucking years. It had been four years at this point," mm-hmm. and he's like, "I need to let this go because it's not gonna happen." And it was real sad. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think I took away maybe the wrong thing. I, not even the shot, just the ending in general. I kind of just saw this as like sometimes shit just doesn't align. Yeah. The way it I, and I think that was him accepting that. Yeah. Um, Very having, sad. Yeah. <laughs> having watching, uh, having watched Chunky Express now with this, it, it, it reminded me a lot of, of that where it's like, you know, you interact with people in their lives, you kind of cross points and everything. And they just met at this, uh, probably the toughest points in either of their lives and they were there for each other and that's kind of the best thing you can ask for really is just having that person there who truly understands and I think yeah the end was him just accepting that letting it go and it's very bitter but also it's like you know sweet yeah. that he's able to just be like you know have that memory and it'd be you know kind of that's him just finally having closure and that's yeah, that's also the best you can really ask for. Yeah, yeah. Um, having that final. Can closure. I relate this to my favorite television show of all time? Is it? Uh, you say Horseman, fucking Bojack, Lost. Bojack oh, no, no, no. Lost oh. is not my favorite television God, show. Spo- <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming you guys already know what I'm about to reference, but spoilers for Bojack Horseman. It's my favorite show of all time. Please watch it. Um, the last lines of that series, where he's, uh, Diane says, um, "Spoilers." Say, I said that. Oh, did you? Yeah, I said spoilers for BoJack Horseman. It's my favorite show of I'm all sorry. time. I, 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 I kind of like, tune out whenever you start talking about this shit. <laughs> it's like one of the last lines of the series. Diane tells BoJack, um, um, 
I believe that someone can be a part of your life and be like fundamental to who you are, but that also doesn't mean that they have to be in your life forever. I don't know. It's kind of the same feel, right? Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Watch but Bojack like, Horseman. That's these, fantastic. Yeah, Bojack Horseman is like, uh, it's one of my it really is time. a fucking great yeah. show. We're not yeah. going to yeah, talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we're not right going to get into it, but similar, <laughs> similar themes and just the fact that you can meet someone that is vital to like who you are and who you become, but also sometimes it's not permanent. It's, yeah. Yeah. Nothing is real happy movie. Yeah, I think this, I think like <laughs> yeah, for me, I kind I kind of agree with that. Yeah, it's like in terms of like well, that's like for emblematic of the entire like movie with you know what's called like people like in, instrumental to your people but not permanent, instrumental but not permanent people yeah. into your lives. Um, yeah, I think at the end, like I know I know there's like this whole Reddit theory online of like you know it is like he's putting the secret inside the hole. The whole thing is like secret hole disappears. Mm. That like it's like I, I fucked Maggie Chung. No, <laughs> like, no. I, I know not. <laughs> I, Don't I, listen to I Reddit. Love, I love Reddit. I'm like <laughs> they're so into that like the fucking theory. I'm like why, but um, but no, I think it's like I think for me it's like he like for me what I think he says you know just like his feelings for uh, mm-hmm. Sue and he's yeah. putting it in and just and his him moving on and you know and you know if it wasn't for the sequel then you hope like okay he is moving on too. But no, the sequel happens, and he did not move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's um, it's and it's great. Yeah, it was you know very it's emotionally impactful ending. It's great. Once again, I love this guy's like a lot of his final shots. And final shots are important, John. Please, you know. Yes, fucking, they're important. They're important. They, they, you know, <laughs> fucking like on the air is not a good fucking final shot for Quiet Place Part Two. You bitch. Oh <laughs> okay. My God. Okay. So I and, thought it was great, John. <laughs> No, not really. I hated that movie. <laughs> you hated Quiet Place Part Two? I didn't hate it. I didn't like it. It's getting it worse. It's getting worse in memory. We are not talking about <laughs> Quiet Place. <laughs> Listen to so, our Quiet Place episode. Uh, yes. What's it for called? our thoughts on that, and why said, we keep bringing it up every fucking episode. <laughs> it's not even a Quiet Place. It's, it's important it's, to the lore. It's, it's filled. Uh, it's filled so like irrational hatred for John Krasinski for sucks. some reason. Oh, yeah. All right, but I, I like it's you, one John. of my favorite parts of the show. <laughs> yeah, it's become a staple. So, wait, what do you guys think about like maybe the music? Like, uh, you know, you might just theme, you know, right. dun, 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 or the neck and cool. Like, that's great. Like, I thought, like, song. in every one car Y certainly has a strength with like interjecting music over his cinematography. It's true for both movies, used differently, um, in both movies, but like, yeah. both are like. I thought soundtrack was just insane for both. Yeah, in a weird way, like his music is his dialogue because he usually has a yeah. lot, of, like a lot of no dialogue uh, shots, mm-hmm. and his music kind of fills that sound void that you get, and it, and it works. It just works, you know. What I mean, that's yeah. why masterfully done. Like it's different from other indie films, and I, I'm I'm okay with indie films with just using no score and just like like you know like the pie eating scene and ghost story, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like um, but in in here it like I I kind of prefer this in a weird way, but like. If it's if done right, where it does, and for me, it never felt boring, or I never felt like I, I was like lacking. No, like, I, yeah. sometimes when a film like plays a song over and over again, I get sick of it. And here, though, it just it's fucking just works. I I have no idea why it works here and it doesn't in other movies, but it works here. That's and a I lot like of it. his style. Is yeah, like things yeah. that wouldn't work for me normally. Mm-hmm. There's an impeccable taste in like music and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it just sets the mood so fucking perfectly. It's great. All right. So, all right. Wrap this up. Let's go go around the board. Our final thoughts and opinion. Let's start with you, Blake. Me. Um, It's great. Um, I don't like it as much as Chunking Express, personally. I just think that that movie, I, I almost feel like I got like hit by a train watching it. Just, <clears throat> sorry, I'm choking. Um, I don't know what it is about Chunking Express. That movie is like, just like brings me to life. Um, this one's very good. It's incredibly well made. It's fucking just masterfully crafted. I like it a lot. I definitely want to own it. So on the shelf. And that one, the Blu-ray is actually affordable. That just one, the Blu-ray is affordable. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually affordable. Yeah. Does that come in the box set? That comes in the box set too. So but I'll probably I would, just get the box yeah. set. But I, I would I would recommend getting that because one cool cover and they have the original version on there. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe I'll have to get both then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for me... Chunking Express is my favorite film of the three we watched, but I think this is the best film that we watched, if that makes sense. I think, like, every single fucking aspect of this film is 
masterfully done. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's rare for me to see that in a movie. So personally, it would be on the shelf, but I think just like because of the craft, if I'm looking at it objectively, uh, I would put it in the museum. Boom! His first museum of the day. Everyone, let's get a clap. Wait, you said on the shelf, right? For you? I did say on the shelf. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, uh, again, like I, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, just echoing a lot of what you guys have said. It's just so well crafted in every way. Um, it, it's it's another like I said for chunking lore. It's just a movie that I think you should watch. Everyone should watch at some point. Just like it's like, oh, you think you know romance in a film? Let me show you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you think you know heartbreak, bro? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I put it in the museum. I think this is the first time I've put two movies <laughs> and, and a single episode in a museum. But like, damn, I don't know. It's just they're they're fucking awesome. They're amazing. Tell people they're gonna get into a romantic comedy when you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I told that to uh, Leia when we watched this. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I did just because like she wouldn't watch it if it was like an uh, artsy romantic movie. She's like, I hate your artsy fartsy shit. Because yeah, I think I took her to Bird Boy one time. It's a very short story. And then, like, it's this animated Spanish um, film. And there's, like, a fish fucking a uh, rat. <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, she lied to me. She's like, it's, I really like the film. It was so challenging. But afterwards, she's like, I fucking hated that. Uh, but this, this one, like, you know. Was that early me. in your relationship? Yeah, yeah early, very okay. early. She was like, <laughs> and then, uh, now, and then, you know, we watched this. And she was like, oh, my God. It was so artsy. I'm like, no, no, it's a, com- it's a romantic comedy. It's like a, like one of those K-dramas where, like, they act cutesy. And she's like, really? And then. Done, done. I'm like, you lied to me. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even call this an art film. I just think I mean, it's, it, is, it is art. It's so, an art yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. film. But I mean, not in a bad way. Like, I think it's no. art house in the best possible way. Yeah. yeah. But like, I, I don't know, whatever. Continue on. But yeah, um, just it's in the museum for me. I, I There's very few Juan Carlos movies that are not in the museum for me because like every, so now every time he touches a film, it's just like fucking shitting gold. He, and I mean, he's probably destroying relationships in the industry <laughs> along the way, but I, I applaud the sacrifices. You know what I mean? This is, is, is the end justifies the mean. Maybe not for Christopher Doyle, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, this is, I think this is my second favorite film of all time. Um, the, se- the film, the second film that I watched the most, the first one would be Old Boy. I, by a story of the film, that's probably one of the first films I've ever seen. Um, I feel like, uh, and I know, I know. It's wait, uh, old boy was one of the first. Movies. Yeah, it's it's how it's, old? I was like, I think like okay, the first one I remember seeing. So that was like like six, seven, eight or something. You were not old Christ. enough to be watching old boy. It's my uncle, like Uncle Bernie, was just like, it was like this is cinema, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. This and explains then, a lot of how you turned out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was like, fuck yeah, he's chopping his tongue off. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Uh, so yeah, preserved in a museum. I love this film. I, I watch, try to watch it at least once a year. And I always come up with something new. A new technique, a new film technique. So, so film education in one, two hour film. Or one and a half hours. Super yeah. short, by the way. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's it. All right. On to our next film. This one is probably the shortest of the three. <laughs> well, it's the longest it's, of the length. It's Definitely the longest. It, it's called, it's, uh, it's Lust Caution, directed by Ingley. It's a... Uh, What's it called? Oh, I, I I forgot to change the uh, synopsis. I apologize. <laughs> I, read I, it. I, I, read I, it. The U.S. government executive Amanda <laughs> Waller assembles the most dangerous supervillains in the world. What's Bloodsport, Peacemaker, Harley Quinn, and Tony Liang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it called? Okay, so Lust Caution. Uh, Lust Caution is about... Let me just quickly get my cheat sheet. Okay, Lust Caution is about uh, Wong Sha Shi, who is a... Um, What's called? She used to, used to be from Shanghai, immigrated to Hong Kong, and she's a liberal arts. Um, she, she's she's a liberal arts student, and in her liberal arts, she f- basically has feelings slash falls in love with another male student who's very patriotic and um, angry towards the uh, Japanese occupation of mm. China. So as a yeah. result, he tries to create some type of uh, student revolution movement. Yeah, because because his brother went to war and, and his <laughs> parents forbade him. From, from going, so it's a lot of he's yeah. he's trying to find a way to serve his country. Yeah, and, and there's like the like the male frustration uh, character trope that we'll talk about. Yeah, this is that that, that he's like an emblematic of that. Him and yeah. Mr. Yi. Yeah, so like he plans assassination attempt on Mr. Mr. Yi and tries and then gets um, uh, Shashi and who to seduce him and set him up for assassination. But during those attempts, she becomes um, 
involved with him uh, physically, but sexually, also, yeah, sexually, yes, <laughs> and uh, what emotion? <laughs> you missed that. Hence so the sad. title <laughs> lust. Oh, it's called and um, emotionally, and it complicates the matter further. So she has to choose between her alliance between possibly Mister Yi or the revolution at hand. All right, so and okay, so this film has you know kind of interesting. This is like straight off um, came out what what's it oh I I didn't I didn't change the release date, but it came out a uh, twenty twenty twelve. No, it's so. 2007. 2007. Oh, no, my bad. 27. 2007. You're yeah. slipping, Philip. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, <laughs> this came out um, after... This, this is a film after Broke by Mountain when he won Best Director. Mm. This is definitely the film that... It's Ang Lee, by the way. Yeah, Ang Lee. Oh, yeah. Directed Kar by Wai. Ang Lee. Oh, what's it called? Yeah, Ang- Wong, Wong Kar Wai never won any... Man. Yeah, never, never won any fucking Academy Awards travesty. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, Ang Lee, fucking Academy Awards, who cares? Yeah, sometimes. No, they, do, they do matter in some regards in terms of like how films I think the only thing it, so. that really matters when it comes to the Academy is nominations. And even then, it's like iffy, but just because it helps bring attention to films. Yeah. You know what I some mean? Some terrible movies have been nominated for Best Picture. I know, I'm not saying that it's... That's the that's where they're some flawed. You know, that's that's like one of the biggest some, things. With like Crash! Movies. Crash won Best Picture! <laughs> yes. yes. That yes. won Best Picture! I fucking hate I'm just saying, movies like, movie. like, uh, like Parasite, the reason why they got so much attention and people watch them so much. because it won Best Picture. Yeah, because it won Best Picture. So, people like, were there's... so mad about that. Yeah, I watched there's, that there's before a lot of positives. did or won Best Picture. Not a big deal. That's like no one fucking cares. <laughs> What's well, it called? It's uh, a. Yeah. was the first person to ever see Moonlight ever. <laughs> Barry Jenkins until... came to my house and screened it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, then... less caution. All right, so like you know, Angley is what's called huge repertoire. Um, uh, from his early class, early you know, films in Taiwan, uh, Pushing Hands, The Wedding Banquet, uh, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, and then he transitioned to a Jane Austen film. Never directed anything in English language, and he worked with Emma Thompson. Uh, sense and sensibility and you know he had his hollywood career there really weird interesting trivia Emma Thompson said that um there's a culture clash between them when they first had it where because you know his command of the english language wasn't so great so one of the notes that he gave uh, Emma Thompson is like oh you look so old stop looking so old (laughs) 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 and then he said and then and after one of the takes with like um alan rickman and stuff he was like boring (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but like somehow it worked and he made it a, a fantastic fucking film um i storm ride with the devil underrated um and his fucking big one crouching tiger hidden dragon i which, thought you're gonna say hulk yeah. <laughs> actually how many of you guys have seen crouching tiger hidden dragon i have never seen it all the way through oh i know oh, uh, i'm I know. the same oh boat. I, um, i've seen like please I, I i remember the buzz around it when i was a kid um and I think my mom rented it, but I just watched. Parts um, of I'm it. not gonna I lie; I totally spaced out. What are we talking about? <laughs> have you have you seen Have you seen Crash Tiger Hidden Dragon? No. Oh my gosh! Not a single one of you has seen Crash Tiger Hidden Dragon. I've seen Hulk. Oh! <laughs> oh! No, yeah, I've I... definitely seen Hulk too. Oh. God, Dude, you okay. seen Hulk? Can I just go on Crash Tiger Hidden Dragon? More. I haven't seen Hulk money. either. I'm gonna go on a, uh, on a quick tangent for Hulk. I remember as a kid, this movie came out, what, 2000? 2000, 2003. Uh, 2003. This was like after Spider-Man and the X-Men movies had been released. I was like, fuck yeah. Like, I was super hyped for any kind of superhero movie ever. And then, then Hulk came out and they're like, this guy did Quilching Tiger and Dragon. I wasn't that into it because I was still a child. But like, I knew of it. And I was like, okay, cool. This could be awesome. I love Hulk. This is going to be so cool. And then watching that movie... I was like, I don't know, it changed me. I was like, wow. I, I, I'd never hated a superhero movie so much. That was like the first superhero movie I remember like just hating. I yeah. think I've like, only ever seen happening? a scene I watched a bootleg DVD of that movie. <laughs> of someone literally recording the screen. My dad bought it. He's like, here, watch the new Hulk. And I was just like, this, this fucking sucks. And there's people walking in front of the screen. And I was... I was real I think mad. I've only seen like a scene from that movie. Does the Hulk like beat up some dogs? He does. Yeah. He beats up a fucking poodle. <laughs> I, uh, like these roided this. up poodles. That's like the only it thing is, I know about that they, movie. They put the Hulk serum stuff or whatever into like a like there's like a pit bull and a rottweiler and then a poodle like i don't know <laughs> yeah. why and it was just like a buffed up 
ugly CG looking poodle yeah. fighting the Hulk. It was just the dumbest shit. Was all, I, I, I like. I don't want to put all the blame on Angley, but at the same time, I put all the blame on Angley. <laughs> like it's uh, like it's entirely his fault, but I kind of understand. Like it's weird. Like see, going reflecting on it as an adult, like I kind of see what he was going for, but like he just went about it like just in just the wrong way. Well, and I, what a weird character to do that with too, Hulk. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this about Hulk. Look, and I'll be honest. Okay, when I first watched it, I didn't hate it as much because. I kind of knew like his weird art, like you know his, his his familial stuff with beforehand. So it wasn't super shocking. But then again, I, I fucking loved Hulk. I so said, that's I just... to, like you were a kid. Like, did you come out of the vagina with like film knowledge? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you like came out with the film degree in your hand. I like no, I like you know like went to the library as much as I can. Uh, went over books, watched movies, and then uh, like. Like, you, know, you were, like, the, a literal child. You're younger than us. You're the youngest <laughs> person here. Uh, what's the Turner classic movie? Philip is 15. Like <laughs> TCL. Uh, TCL. Is it, not is it, TLC. No, not, not TCL. Scrubs. Turner classic. Yeah, you know, watch a lot of that. And I don't want no scrubs. So it was just, like... No money. And then, like, internet. Like, just, like, yeah, just, like, stuff like that. Just, like, doing whatever I can. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, so I kind of had an idea that it was going to be something like this. But then I just hope I had no idea. Yeah, I just I just I just hoped that you know there's some more Hulk smash. <laughs> but um so but I don't hate it as much. In a weird way, retrospectively, I like I said, it's a I kind of appreciated its place in the superhero history as a super art house fucking version of yeah, a superhero it, film. Yeah, it's it's but, like I said, my opinions have changed on it where it's now it's like look back on it, it's like, you know, we kind of need more movies like that now yeah. we kind of need someone to really take a challenging approach on a f- on like a superhero that is very popular and well known it's it probably won't ever happen again no. <laughs> but like something like that you know we need I, I one car why yeah <laughs> we need I his, his, it. would his you consider version. like sin city to be kind of like something no. similar no no but, no but sin city is like no no but saying like sin city is like a pretty artistic take but it's like, very it, it's true appropriate to, but it's very yeah. true to the graphic no yeah. this is not true to the graphic <laughs> true to any anything no, no i've it's seen like, sin city weird, was it, was it and christoph sin city too. no who, not christoph no, eric bonner plays yeah eric bonner plays hulk just for my has a what's his name Plays his oh, dad. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, who plays the like guy from Stealth? Uh, I like plays, how like the villain. Two conversations going uh, on right Josh now. Lucas. Yeah, Josh down Lucas. To happen eventually. Which yeah. um, probably the most forgettable actor ever. No, this is important. This is important. The Hulk does not matter. But then what's called it? But I guess and you know and Broken Mountain, which he won the Best Academy Award, taking Woodstock Life of Pi second Academy Award, and his career takes a big dip in Billy Lynn's Halftime Walk, the Gemini Man, when he's a focus with 120 frames per second. Dude, it just where did come on, man? Like he, he, but he always had. I, I appreciate this. He always had a fascination with in his in his films. Almost always, there's like something he's pushing. Like yeah. the sense of sensibility is like what what happens when you guy who does who doesn't really know how to speak English never read a Jane Austen novel directed a Jane Austen film. It's like what if a person who never read a comic book doesn't like Hulk makes Hulk. And then, what if Crash Tiger Hidden Dragon we mix all these different type of wushu elements, but also like Hollywood action and bring that into there or like Broken Mountain at the time. Having a romance Very story. Very groundbreaking. Yes. It's insane. It lost a crash. I know. We were talking about that uh, shit before. Who did it, crash? And it was all because of <laughs> like homophobic. And it's true. Even like Jack Nicholson, when he opened it, he was like, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> when he read, read it off. And the uh, Life of Pi with um, super fertile real um, animals that, you know, are main characters in the film. Again, groundbreaking mm-hmm. tech. Like, uh, yeah, one of the most beautiful movies good. ever. Yeah. And yeah. in Lost Caution, it's, uh, you know, it's sex, but but we'll we'll talk about it. In Groundbreaking sex. <laughs> it's very it um, earns its N seventeen. Yes, yeah. but it, but it's not just the sex. Like, there's a lot of different things. Which when I get into the production stuff, when we were going uh, deep into Tony Lang's career, I didn't expect to see his balls at any point. <laughs> we did. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. He but, went deep in her. <laughs> uh, first thing is um the the title actually has double meaning in Chinese um. Lusk uh, could be actually read as color, and caution could be read as ring. So like oh. colorful ring, so which is mm. like Jason which no- is big. noted this earlier. Yeah, which is like kind of big on um what's it called? I, I didn't even know about this until like uh, Spencer, who what's it called, told me it's like oh that's colorful ring. I'm like oh like the ring, and later on he's like yeah what's it about? And he watched the film too. And he's <laughs> like huh. So what time place does it take place in? I'm like ah oh, Spencer. <laughs> um, what's it called? Uh, this is based on. The short story slash novella, Lust Caution by Eileen, Eileen, 
Eileen Chang. But this story is based on an actual real life badass uh, spy, Zheng uh, Pingru, who was involved in the scheme to assassinate uh, Ding Mo- 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 Chun, who is the mis- Mr. Yi, pretty much. Mm. And, you know, he's a security chief of Wang Jingwei, which is the same puppet re- regime in the film. And once again, same thing. She was a socialite. She seduced him. They fucked. They kind of set him up. And it, it's like kind of like in somewhat similar building. And But then in this one, he's a little bit more aware. Um, he just knew about like he just like was sensed enough of like suspicious people and escaped. And they mm. tried to meet again. But this time he's aware of it. But she's like, fuck it. I'm going to just take my own life out. And she get, brings a gun and tries to shoot him. But then the gun jams. Ah. Yeah. And then, you know, she gets caught. And then, you know, her dad's like a whole pot, like a, a influential figure in the government. And they try to force like, we're going to fucking kill your 22 year old daughter unless you fucking join the party. Hmm. He's like, nah. So she dies. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. But, you know, good. For, but like, not good Dad for her. That she year. died. But then she, um, you know, and she died at 22. Yeah, but she became a martyr for the people of Taiwan, and there's a memorial statue of her uh, unveiled in uh, Shanghai in 2009. Hmm. So, you know, like I said, you know, brief props to her. And th- that whole thing is just as sprawling as this fucking film. So I understand the, the length and paying homage and respect. Sprawling is a good yeah. word to describe this film. <laughs> What's it called? But yeah, um, and then also for this film, uh, last little trivia, uh, Tang Wei, she was blacklisted from China's movie industry for four months. Or no, not four months. Three to four years. 4K. Because of her sexual scenes in the film. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they're just like, mm. but then Tony Leung, nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, of course, male and also, um, you know, Tony Leung is a superstar there. Untouchable. But yeah, but she didn't make a comeback. So They you know, should have blamed story. Ang Lee. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's he's not, he didn't get any flack No, because he's Taiwanese. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, so okay. he doesn't give a fuck. And he also has a career in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. So, but then, you know, but she came back with a Chinese mega hit, Finding Mr. Right, which is like, you know, the most, one of the most disposable fucking Chinese rom-coms ever. But good for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good for her. So this film, um, my background on this film, um, my mom just, I think she just like, um, got like the, like, a, like, I don't know how, but she got like a screener DVD. Oh God. It was like from Korea or something. We watched it. It was in Korean subtitles. So like, it was oh, really no. hard for me because I was like. There's a lot of dialogue, and I'm like, you know, the Korean, like, technically, Korean is my second language, but English is my main language. And I'm just like fucking piecing everything together. And I'm like, wait, but why are they having sex now? Because I'm yeah. still like trying to process the dialogue for five minutes. There's, there's a lot of dialogue. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then, uh, um, even for me, like reading the subtitles, like it, the first scene is so fucking quick. It's yeah. just like, what? Yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's I was like, like oh, oh okay. Yeah. Like, uh, the, yeah, exactly. When they're playing Mahjong and they're all yeah. like riffing yeah. off of each other. Yeah. It's a lot of fast moving yeah. <laughs> pieces. And this is probably the only film I've seen the most. I really. <laughs> why? Yeah. All and right. then it's like. This uh, movie. Feels its length. Uh, I okay. Well, we'll, we'll that's good. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. But first, let me ask: What is everyone's fam- familiarity with Ang Lee films? I know we talked about the Hulk. Let's move <laughs> on from that. But what other Ang Lee films have you guys seen? Uh, Hulk and Life of Pi. I think this is it. You really? Seen Life of Pi? I have not. Brought by Mountain? No. Crash Dark Hidden Dragon? Oh, we already asked you that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, really? No. That, that single. Hulk. And Ow! Life of- <laughs> Hulk and Life of Pi. Oh, yeah. I've seen. Um, I, I was watching Taking Woodstock, and then I had to like leave and go to work or something. <laughs> um, but I watched a good portion of that. Okay, almost finished it. I like that movie. Yeah, Hulk and Life of Pi, and now Lust Caution. I, um, I, I mean, you know, I should have, I should have chosen Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon for next week <laughs> instead of instead of Hero. Well, we could still do that. Yeah, but I, oh, wait, but did, did Rosie already make the? Uh, the graphic design for next week. She can do it again. No, okay. No well, offense. Sorry, Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. It. Oh, damn. It's fine. It just break my heart. Yeah, my I God. know. I've seen. I've seen chunks. I saw like I want to say like I saw like half of uh, Crouching Tiger. I don't remember why I never finished it, but like I I know that I've seen like a good portion of it. I understand. It's the, 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 the sword, and they, they're going after the, the, the sword fights and stuff. Stop, it's stop, stop. It's a cool movie from is what there, I've seen. Is there sword fights in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's that's the only ones I've seen so far. Yeah, now... Oh and, you know, Hulk just left such a great impression, <laughs> you know? What's it called? But you still have Life of Pi, right? What do you guys think of Life of Pi? It's, it's gorgeous, technically. Yeah, I and, thought, I thought it was very pretty. I, I wasn't a big fan of the ending. 
I don't know. No, like, spoilers. In, in oh. I'll get to it. <laughs> Just like, you, you out, like spoiled a, the end of BoJack Horseman I, for anyone listening. I gave a pretty fair spoiler warning. <laughs> it, yeah, it's it's. I mean, uh, on technical achievement, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Um. The the way that it's, I don't know the way that it's told. Everything it's, on that fucking boat was great. Yeah. 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 I, it's, I it's really well done. I'll say it. it wasn't like my favorite movie ever, but it's definitely one. It's like that's 2012, right? Uh, yeah. Or 2011. I think it was 2000. It, it was around. Those it was years. 2012. Yeah. I think it 2012. came out the same year it, as yeah. uh, 127 hours. It's right? like if, no, no. If there's a movie no, where it's, it's, it's like you want to see year, a super awesome, uh, amazing visual film, that if it has to be like 3D or something, okay. I'd be like, we're putting on Life of Pi. Fuck Avatar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I agree with that. Life of Pi any day. Because he, yeah, he has just more, way more interesting use of colors and framing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really great. I give it that. Like, I, also, Avatar fucking blows. I hate that movie. <laughs> I, Me too. I'll say this. Okay, you know, never. Mind. I don't want to say it. We're, we're, we're it's gonna it's gonna be a two hour Avatar. Yeah, let's just let's yeah. just let's just fucking talk about less costume. We've gone on like fifteen million side tangents because already. Ang Lee deserves it. Because I know you haven't seen a single Ang Lee film, David <laughs> Blake Allen. You just doxed me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He doxed me last you week. Know. What's called? He scratched me back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, okay, let's um, fucking go. <laughs> okay, so let's um. All right, so what brief, brief opinions on the films? Um, what do you guys know about this film when I told you guys about it? And then how did you guys watch it? Do you guys difficult watching it? And also, because it's, it's actually really hard to watch the NC seventeen cut. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I, it was, <laughs> well, I'm not talking about the actual like 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 watching the film, but like accessing the film. Well, it was pretty easy for me. I just googled it. Yeah, and it yeah. showed up on Vudu, and I rented it. Fuck Vudu, Vudu, by the way. Yeah, Vudu. Fuck sucks. Vudu, by the way. Why? I hate them Why? because there are tons of times where I wanted to rewind. Um, cause maybe I missed something or whatever. I got distracted. So I'd hit my arrow key to go back. That is a feature on every other video player on the fucking planet. Except, but not voodoo. <laughs> I had to, and this movie's so long in like, if you go back like, like a centimeter, <laughs> like you're fucking 15 minutes behind. Yeah. It's so fucking annoying. On top of that, voodoo is now emerging as, cause they merged with Fandango, voodoo Fandango. They're like becoming the maybe then rivaling Amazon for video. Well, get your shit together. Like, voodoo. Weird. I don't know. I just, yes, it wasn't hard for me to watch it. I just found yeah. it on voodoo and watched it on voodoo. Uh, I just had to, you know, turn the volume down a few times <laughs> <laughs> watching it in a house with other people. It was just like, yeah. I'm closing the door, turn the volume down. <laughs> this is the <laughs> this is, you don't want your parents this, to walk this in. Is my mom's yeah. uh, comments during the film. Very acrobatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, cool. my. Oh man, getting a look into Philip's psyche. That's <laughs> <laughs> called uh, first movie you ever watched was Old Boy. <laughs> oh, how's it called? Uh, no, I mean like you know me and my mom were like you know big history nuts and stuff. So and also like we were familiar with like kind of this narrative and stuff. So we're interested and also like you know my mom's very interested in like like framing and stuff like that and trying to see like what he does with the extras and the budget is like. To be fair, you can only make this movie if you win an Oscar for fucking best picture film. No one else will be able to make this movie. Yeah. But um, yeah, just like what they could do with the budget and like kind of like just taking it in and stuff like that. We're big into spy films. Um, so yeah, it's a bonding moment. One of the few with my mom, but it was this film. Oh, I'm uh, yeah. happy you had this moment. <laughs> Probably, Probably it's a weird, uh, like the most uncomfortable uh, cinematic experience I've had is watching The Handmaiden. Which is oh, with like, my dad, right? Yeah, with <laughs> with Philip's fucking dad, which is also like almost just amount of like sexual content in this movie, and just sitting right next to your dad. And I was like, wow, oh my yeah, god! I, was like, I remember he was like, which hmm. also takes place like at the same time period too. Let's like, all get yes. our families together and watch the mysterious skin next week. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, let's just get this yeah. power through this. Movie. All right, so what's it called? Oh, let's, let's let's give this film some respect. Yes. Okay, okay so let's. Okay, so it's uh, the background is it takes place during the second uh, Sino Japanese War. Which is a military conflict between the Republic of China and the Emperor uh, of Japan during 1937 through 1945. This also is also known as World uh, War II. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this was seen as uh, the Wait, beginning that? of World War II for in Asia for many people, right? Yeah. And this is like a whole precursor. And then U.S. fully got involved once you know Japan decided the brilliant move of bombing Pearl Harbor because yeah. I this fucking terrible, Not a good terrible plan. things. And then yeah, yeah. and then they involved the U.S. That and was everything. Stupid. Yeah, it was. So yeah, okay. So what is your, you know, I guess like how much do you guys know about this time period, especially in like China's perspective on I, high I, school understanding? Yeah, that's that's one thing that really interested me about this film is you rarely see any World War II stuff about China. They weren't like 
a central player that you hear about often. Yeah. Um, so that, that was really, really interesting to me just to see, you know, the cities and yeah. like all the, like, I don't, I know nothing about it, but I thought that's probably what China <laughs> looked like during world war two. Yeah. It's like the, like, I gotta say the period details insane on this film, like with like the sets, the extras, mm. the, the level of details, unlike, um, what's well, unlike certain films where they use the same extras over and over again. Like this one was like, they were pretty varied with the costumes and everything. Oh and yeah. They're going in and out of frame. There's yeah. always something happening. Like there's a character begging someone stealing, uh, someone like getting the rides <sighs> or somebody like looking like where there's spy shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think like from, for me, like I totally understand, like I'm getting the feeling that like over long, hard to watch, whatever. I, but, I didn't, uh, I'll explain later, but continue. Yeah. But does like, it create a setting better than Reminiscence does? Yes. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, I, for me, I, I get, I really do understand, like, because the first time it was weird for me. Um, but on rewatches, like, for me, this kind of like aged like fine wine since, like, when I watched it in 2007 or 8. That, like, every time I watch it, there's something new I'm taking. But, like, why well, I didn't notice that detail. I didn't notice how, like, even small little things were, like, um, when, um, oh gosh, what's his name? The handsome, the handsome male student. His name is uh, Kwong. Kwong. Old Wu. Yeah. <laughs> or not Old Wu. <laughs> okay. uh, Kwong, who also played by a very famous pop star, sold like fucking millions of copies. And yeah, he's huh. now also, he was in Black Hat with Tong Wei. Uh, yeah. Weird. Yeah, I know. They're brothers in that one. Brothers and sisters. But, um, you know, in that one, we're like, oh, there's a scene where there he's, he's uh, tipping one of the older gentlemen's on the sidewalk mm-hmm. and and then the, and then the older gentleman's like that's not enough tip me more yeah, more money. Yeah, yeah 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 and that kind of but that kind of sets the period detail and like atmosphere yeah also kind of leads into like you know when they're talking to old Wu and old Wu is like this is not enough you got to give more and more so there's always yeah. some type of thematic link to Our the money next is shot. inflating <laughs> yeah i know like every 20 percent like in shanghai so there's always something going on to help further along either the plot or the atmosphere or the setting or give a real yeah. good idea of historical films. So, I mean, if you don't like historical films, I, I kind of understand why, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was very excited that this took place in Shanghai because Shanghai has always uh, fascinated me yes. so much. Uh, the fact that it was like occupied by the West, um, specifically like Britain for so long and it had such a cultural impact on the city and everything and the fact that, you know, they're speaking uh, it's like there's Mandarin English, you know, and they kind of like yeah. it's all and in Hong Kong too, right? Yeah, in Hong Kong yeah. as well. But like, uh, it's like, but even Hong Kong is still kind of its own thing too. So yeah. it's like because they're the hundred year thing. Yeah, 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 it's it's a it's a very different. But like, and then the fact you throw in the Japanese occupation on top of that, it's it's a really cool. I mean, a, maybe cool is not the best term, but like you know, it's a very it's fascinating a good setting point um, in history. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I was like, you know really aware of like all the stuff that the japanese had done in china like you know in manchuria and all the yes. really horrible things that happened yeah and this is like, during the occupation so and then like they mentioned non uh the, is it nanjing or nanking the, yeah, yeah when she yeah, said yeah. like uh or when he said his wife was going to nanjing and i was just like oh yeah, yeah. Um, the massacre there. but Yikes. that didn't happen uh yeah so like i I was vaguely like you know like somewhat aware of like a lot of the some of the historical context of it and it was just really cool to actually dive into that period yeah a little more detailed sadly not enough films do it like this oh and that's not by ccp like chinese communist party really i wonder if like how much they would want to focus on that time period no, no there was um i mean it's not it's not necessarily that time period but it was like I think I told you about this one. Um, the guy who made Hero, Yu yeah. Zhang, apparently made his master class film where one of the peasants during that time, um, his daughter died, was killed during the thing. and But she's in this one second of a film and he's able, trying to find it. So the last memory pictures. But then because the film was so good and highlighted the era so much that they banned that film for like Western audiences. Huh. Weird. Yeah. So they're they're not. What about, what about you, Blake? What did, what do you think about the kind of the historical context? I mean, yeah, this? like if you're a history nerd, you're going to love it. Like it's obviously very well detailed. Um, I'm not a huge history guy. Um, like it's like what Jason said. I'm like, yeah, this is probably accurate. Like I'm yeah. not the kind of like, like your friend Kyle. I bet you could. Yeah, talk. I tried to get Kyle to watch this with me 
and I tried to entice him by saying there's a lot of sex scenes in it. Um, <laughs> he's like, bro, I looked up the sex scenes. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't watch it with uh, me. <laughs> but, like, but, but, but what I'm saying, the reason he might like it is because he is no, that, like a that, huge yeah. history guy. Yeah, I should have um, gone with the history. Yeah, aspect. like if you're a history nerd, this is probably like a experience for you. It creates the atmosphere very well, but I don't know. I'm just not a huge history guy, but it's... Yeah, it's similar, well crafted. Similar to the Handmaiden, where that was like a uh, Korea uh, occupied, but or Japan occupied Korea, Korea yeah. which is that's something that like I've never really seen or like know too much about at all. So I was like, ooh, this is like very fascinating to see that perspective. So yeah, it's cool. I say like same same with how I said like uh, train spotting. I'd be like, you might want to watch the Handmaiden. Yeah, after yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> it was very yeah, very interesting. It's it's a good pairing too in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. What's it called? Um. All right, so let's, let's get in the film. You know, we have our main um, protagonist, Wong Sha Chi, played by Tong Wei, who I think is fantastic in the film. This is her first film role, a yeah, major film yeah. role. Wow. And she did she did great, like so much emotion. Like she was that with Tony a... Leung, and she was toe to toe with him, like yeah, yeah. acting wise. Yeah, incredible. Like, uh, holy shit. Like, is that going to be your first movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was, she was great. And then, yeah. she, and then she got fucked with Black Cat, with Chris Hemsworth. But yeah, yeah but don't worry, she, she's back on the track. Um, Good for her. And now she's um, Black, yeah. living in Korea I never watched and it. learning That's Korean. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's married to a Korean girl. It's, it's, she has a very interesting like yeah. um, choice, like choices for everything. But uh, yeah, so she's a shy and experienced university student who travels to Shang- Shanghai to Hong Kong to take turn Lingnan University, which is Hong Kong's only public liberal arts college. And I do like the fact that all these details are pretty accurate, like the attention to detail. Mm. And, you know, for me, I was just, like really fascinated with just like just learning about the culture and the time and like how their the cinematic point of view and stuff like that and you know she's uh what's called and then you know she talks about her family and stuff like that and like her brother she's basically lonely here like a good setting of the character her she's lonely her brother and her dad are in hong um her in, in britain you know yeah I mean? and, and they don't have enough money to bring war, her yeah yeah she couldn't go so and then you know during there like you kind of see you know her like befriend all these other people um like which is our core students who try to assassinate Mr. Yeah. Yi and main main guy is Kwang Yu Min. Fuck this guy, by the way. You know, yeah. <laughs> just setting off the chain of events, and yeah, you know, it feels just so like I don't know, immature. Yeah, uh, guys, to, guys, I know where a guy is. Let's fucking kill yeah. him. Yeah, like, like that, you know, that's it, like, and that's totally. You could see like people during that era just like do that shit. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie though. Is when he's like kind of organizing. Setup, yeah, he's they're just like get like or they're at like the school and he's just like anyone who's not a fucking patriot like get out. He like I don't know. Yeah, just, I, I yeah. mean I just got the feeling that these people are they're kids basically. They've, yeah, no, they and are. They they're inexperienced and they do, have no idea what they're doing. And that they're might actually be my favorite head. like segment of the movie is like the part where they're younger and they're just like in that apartment or whatever yeah. and they're just like. They have no fucking idea like what they're doing and yeah. or getting themselves into. I like that part the most. I don't know. I just yeah. I, yeah. I like I that think, aspect. I think. Oof. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say. I think it all just comes to head. You know when the you know the stabbing scene <laughs> where yeah. it's just like yeah. oh yeah like you, this is really what it comes down to ultimately. Um, yeah, and it's, it's interesting. Like when you're talking about the stabbing scene, is that. With Tony Leung, we never see on-screen violence from him. I mean, besides no. the, the the rape scene, we never see him actually kill anybody. <laughs> that's that's a big describe. besides. Yeah. yeah, but then, um, but the only people you see on-screen violence from are the university students. Mm-hmm. They kill yeah. the only on-screen death. I mean, yeah. there's and even like their actual deaths are off-screen, mm-hmm. but like they're the only they're the only ones. And it's very purposeful that way too. Maybe it's I don't know if yeah. it's a counterbalance and to sympathy. Graphic and, and yeah. violent and yeah. slow and it's like, oh yeah, my but God. even that, like even that scene, again, like they're inexperienced. They don't know what they're doing. They don't even know how to properly kill like kill a man. It took forever for that poor guy to die. <laughs> like know. it took forever. And I was just, and each one of them at one point picks up the knife and starts stabbing the guy. Like, when's he gonna die? I don't know. Yeah. Um it was, I don't know. I th- I like that aspect of like they're just a bunch of dumb fucking kids. Yeah, what except is, for her because she actually does her fucking job. Yeah, yeah. She actually does her. Oh, except near the end, but, she kind of just yeah. She's yeah. kind of just trial by kinda fire. Fucks she up. just has to just keep. Uh, just she goes through the worst of it, obviously. Well, yeah. yeah, and yeah. then you just see like it's she she has to emotionally mature and everything. And yeah, just you deal see a confidence this. grow in her. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. immediately, like even in the beginning, like you know. 
She just has a natural talent for acting. Mm-hmm. When they were in the by the way, also I think very beautiful sequence when they're in the play. With yeah. The makeup yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the lighting it says like like it's the the cinematographer is I think Rodrigo Prieto or something. He's the guy who did uh, the Irishman and Silence and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's like oh gosh, it's like so super. It's like just like it's it's like a play within a like play within a media, media within media, mm-hmm. and it's just like gorgeous to watch. But yeah, like during that scene, like her emotional um, intuition and uh, acuteness is like all in display right there, and it it it, t- it works well later on. Like, even yeah. when like when she had the dinner scene with Tony Leung, like she was kind of nervous and shit. Mm-hmm. But then like she kind of hid that well. Like that's great acting by the way. Like yeah, yeah. you could tell that the actual character's nervous, but then the character's also acting like they're not nervous. Yeah, that scene uh, is I think that's where uh, that that impressed me the most. The fact this was like her first film. Again, acting opposite Tony Leung, who has like a long career at this point. He's you know he's a very well versed actor, and then like, but she really was. She had just going toe to toe with him, like, and just the subtlety and like she goes the, more than toe to toe with him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the nuances of her performance, of uh, their performances, like both of them, like you can see the different emotions like underneath the surface. Uh, really fucking awesome. Yeah, and it's like. It's that, that yeah. It's like and it's 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 good. It's good to see that, and then they do take their time. Like they actually like the first sex scene doesn't happen until like a little more halfway, right? Or something. Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's a long yeah. way into it's, it. And then like it's uh, and not saying that we were waiting for the sex to happen. Like there's no, a lot that, of stuff. No, that that was just, no. Yeah. There, there's a lot more than the sex, but the yeah. the all the buzz around this movie is about about the like sex. how yeah. graphic it and is. it's just yeah. like which is unfortunate. I, you know? Yeah, I think that's uh, I think it, it does a disservice. I, I'd, like I'd call it more like. It, it's like a good spy movie like it's all about like espionage yeah like she's she's a literal actor um yeah i think it's just because like i don't know it's one of those movies that's like everyone's like oh it's so graphic it's so graphic and it is it's, it's a very sexually explicit movie but yeah i'd call it more like a spy drama than a period oh, piece than absolutely. anything yeah. else yeah, yeah it's like, absolutely it's, it's like it mixes like three different genres like it's yeah it's like it's a period biopic piece it's a espionage film and on top of that kind of like an erotic thriller and that's like kind of like you know like I think that his challenge when taking this film because like in mixing three different types of genres together to this one yeah and I, you know like I said mm-hmm. no one has done it and probably for good reasons because you know I don't know how many people watch it but <laughs> yeah yeah but then um, surprisingly box office hit in you know Asia I don't know how but <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it's uh, no one watched it here though um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's you know I, I give him props for juggling all that well too while also kind of giving so much period of detail in every fucking frame and doing yeah. all this time extras and stuff like that. that that's my favorite aspect of the movie is just like that the atmosphere of this film is really like it's complete you yeah. know like every single even dialogue we're playing mahjong where they're talking about you know the price is going up the inflation import export yeah rates and stuff like that you you get a you get a good look into like the uh, history and culture during that time which i think it's great mm-hmm. that's like a good you know, like a like a cultural piece, you know. Mm-hmm. But it also like makes the characters feel grounded and real. Yeah. You know, they're just talking about their lives. You know, they're talking about their tailor. They're talking about you know different people in their lives. It's yeah. it's good. And there's like this um this interesting conversation with like you know like the difference between Shanghai, uh, like Shanghai and Hong Kong and like Mandarin Shanghainese and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And there's a, even within like there's a division. There's a like and the, like like division is a big thing in this film like there's even division amongst people of the same ethnicity right there's already division amongst people of oh, yeah. immigrants and stuff like that but there's like oh you could speak Shanghainese well we, we could get along well that's why the the Yi family were very taken with her yeah. because like she has she has roots in Shang- Shanghai culture and with yeah. like the, the different things in that and like kind of hints at like we gravitate towards people that have like similarities with us and th- th- that's cool and that's like a very big thing in particularly yeah, that, and that's that like something period. that still lingers around in, in China. Yeah, where it's like yeah, there is the the <laughs> the culture and even language divide is still there, you know, to an extent. Let's go, and then hey, so then you know, and so we talk about the Hong Kong nineteen thirty eight longing glances assassination that fails. They kill, I think Sal, right? Xiao? Yeah, was that was that his brother? No, no, that was no. a hometown friend. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, it's just like, gosh. But yeah, they, they definitely killed him. Um, yeah, and then next. Bra- they stab him like 30 times and then like he, he ends it by... Going. <laughs> Dude, a props to that guy for just sticking. <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah, he just starts getting up, walking away. They're like, okay, stab, 
stab, and he's like, oh, I'm still walking. Just lay down. <laughs> then they eventually snap his neck, and yeah, yeah, that guy's out of the movie after that. <laughs> Fucking Kwong. Piece of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, what does he try to do? He tries to like was he like blackmailing them? Yeah, he's trying what? to he's trying to blackmail them. One of the reasons why um Kwong was pissed, because you know he has feelings for um what's it called? Shashi or but then you know they call her Miss Mai, Mrs. Mai yeah. or something. Yeah. Um he has feelings for her. So when she talked about like, oh, Mr. Yi is definitely gonna play double prize for Mr. Mrs. Mai, he's like, Oh yeah, that's my girl. Off. And then you know, stabs. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's it called? And then, and then we, you know, we jump forward to Shanghai, uh, sh- uh Shanghai, um, it's like three years later or something. Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? And then, uh, 1942 or, um, and now Kwong is a undercover agent for, uh, the, you know, KMT, the Hun Tong, like an actual secret service, which is like, I'm like, oh, that's cool. The like, actual resistance and yeah. we're seeing stuff like that. And, you know, once again, the assassination temp is renewed. We meet old Wu and stuff like that. Um, and it's just like, you know, they go straight at it, like no yeah. sympathies. They even burn her letter, which was oh, like, yeah. And I did like seeing that. Like, there's like definitely evil to both sides. Like, that's a very dick thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, you even see her life change before that because you know she she looks decrepit. She goes to school, but it's not liberal arts anymore. There's a lot of it's, it's devoid of color. You like, see like Japanese arts. culture mm-hmm. getting in there. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like an invasion of culture, and then yeah, it's, and it's almost as if it's like this film is about like a uh, culture trying to preserve and survive against like you know an invading force, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and, you know, it's it's you know it's honorable in some sense, but then the way they approach it is kind of insane, like you know, kids, yeah. So um, yeah, and then you know, we get our uh, sex scenes. They meet each other yeah. again. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about sex. S C X. Let's talk about sex, 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 sex. I like Dex. <laughs> well, the first one's a brutal fucking rape scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's which... pretty shocking. It is yeah. very shocking, I, I, I especially because it, it. kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, yeah. it's, okay, so I mean, it's already kind of uncomfortable because she's really just trying to seduce him, more or less, to you know play the yeah, part. Yeah, she's really like gentle. Yeah, she's like playing like mm, i'm sexy lady yeah and like you know typical typical things a woman would try to do in order to have sex with you and then he starts oh God, beating the shit out he of her throws her against the wall face first and i was just like oh no i don't he, wanna... he whips he whips her with the yeah belt too. yeah he takes off he, his belt he whips he ties her, her, ties her, up, her up takes it off and just oh, it's brutal and dude. even like there's a moment where like she's looking back at it like possible moment of intimacy and mm. he phases for a second but immediately puts her face back onto yep. the bed to try to ruin yeah. that. And then, you know, the thing is like, I think like that was like, like, cause you know, I think the purposely uh, subverting our expectations because Tony Leung usually plays the very sensitive and nice. People. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. quite, and right. I watched and this movie first, I want to say. So jumping from like, uh, evil. So- yeah. I was the first you one I watched. Son of a bitch. Why? I purposely, I purposely ordered the films to get that moment well you know? i didn't even know we we're supposed to yeah, watch them know. in order yeah. i never yeah. watched yeah. them in order. I, I watched this second i um, watched this last. i watched this one first yeah. so jumping from already kind of playing even aside the sexual violence a terrible horrid human being and then you throw in the fact that he's like raping and beating this woman yeah. jumping from this to like chunking express was like a whoa but yeah. it speaks to the volumes of how great of an actor he is yes. and he can just pull off yeah. both and, yeah. the, and the thing is like up until this point we knew he was the target, right? Yeah. We knew, and again, as you said, all the terrible things he's done have been off screen. So we really didn't have like a real good sense of who he was. And then he just starts raping this poor woman, and I was just like, "All right, yeah, he he needs to die." Yeah, as as I, as I immediately was yeah. like, "I can't wait to watch this bitch kill him." Yeah. yeah, what a disappointment that was. Yeah. Yes, and then it's like yeah. true. It's much too. like in the mood for love, we don't yes. get <laughs> we don't get what we want. And then in a, in a yeah. weird way, okay, so like you know. Was the sexual content like bothersome for you guys, or was it was it grueling experience, or do you think it was necessary for the film's narrative or emotional? I, I don't think. I mean, obviously, the rape scene was uncomfortable. I didn't like watching that, but the other sex scenes, eh, whatever. Like, I didn't care. Like, they are uncomfortable. We've all that's seen purpose, porn. Um, yeah. It, and I'm sure it was necessary. I think I I don't know to that extent. I like, yeah, I don't think it had to be quite as. Like, it didn't long have to be as explicit. Out. Yeah, um, I, I don't. I, I would say almost 
you know, I kind of went back and forth a little bit. At this point, I think I'd say maybe it was just because, like, it, it, it's kind of true that you don't really see his, you, when he's walking around and, you know, all the other scenes you have beforehand, he kind of does have that facade of this, you know, kept together man and whatever. And he's very serious and stoic. But once they're together and especially when they're intimate, that's when you actually see him as a person. You see him open up more yeah. and you see him like actually like physically fully naked too. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And expressing <laughs> himself and in horrific ways, but then also in, in these weird, slightly intimate ways where it's just like there's certain points when like, you know, after the first the first scene, which was by far the worst uh later it, it, it's like it, it's weird it's a weird balance where suddenly it's like they, they do actually seem like almost normally intimate and then it's like you, you, you kind of see that she's like maybe falling for him but then it's like no 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 he's a fucking monster like fuck this guy but it's like yeah. it's it's you can kind of see her internal dilemma in a way where she's obviously like because her only other sexual experience was with well, horrible also like you're just like it was yeah, yeah, the, yeah the that friend. was yeah the, the friend guy where it was just like wow that that was that was terrible and then this one it's like oh well it's like it's different it's weird you, you can see your disappointment that i had to have sex with a guy who only had sex with like whores and prostitutes yeah, yeah. and then yeah. only to like not go through with this mission Remember yeah where you see like she's desperate like i can see you i can see the airport i could go there like she's just really like like yeah fine. yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was weird it was weird but i feel like it 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 was a good yeah. in, in a way, window a, yeah. into their minds. Um, yeah. Uh, in a weird way, that, like, I don't think it had to sex... go on for as long. Yeah, but maybe it didn't have to go um, on for se- full. Sex I don't know. in film, for like, me. I just usually don't care about it. Yeah. It's hard to, it's uh, hard to But wow. there, there are moments while they are having sex that, like, does further the character. Yeah. Like, the... They were in the car, and he was telling her about his day, and he saw all these dead people. Yeah, and that was all, like, all of this terrible stuff. Scenes. And yeah. like while he's explaining that to her, he starts like fingering her, and it's just like it oh, shows a complicated relationship. Yeah, and then later on they get to the room or whatever, and then they're having sex, and then he starts to cry. That was that was a moment that I was like, okay, now I get it a little more. Yeah, like, I was how like, he is. Because like, with how long and drawn out sorry but like how long and drawn out they were it i was also really empathizing with her as much too yeah, yeah. i was just like yeah. fuck like she just wants to get out of this situation and it just keeps going and especially when the later scene when she's explaining it to yeah the old woo dude she's, she's like, just like you have to fucking kill him yeah she's like you don't understand how yeah, fucking she's... hard this is and it's like even us the audience who's bear witness to some of the stuff that we pretty rough and and it goes on for a while, and it's like we haven't even seen the full extent of all the shit that's. And like she even describes, she's like, she might kill me, like, like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a lot. I'll say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what the sex scene, like, this isn't an easy watch. I, I, no. I, I, I kind of oh, think no. like the sex scenes, like, like I kind of go for on and like, and I, like I, I feel like it is necessary because in the sense that if it's other things where sex just clearly show off like the male gaze of female body and stuff like that. Yeah, and but it's, it was not in this case. Like every sex scene furthers the character and plot in a weird way. Like even that yeah. like second sex scene where, like he has a weird acrobatic pose and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, like, they wait. they were in some weird positions. Yeah. Also, he licked her armpits, her hairy oh armpits. Yeah, yeah, but like it, it shows more of the character. And even within that scene, you see him softening up, and there's like a weird like character development and arc within a sex scene, which is like yeah. I don't, yeah, rare it, for her film. It didn't totally feel gratuitous no no <laughs> which was, is like which is weird which is for, a feat yeah which that is, this did not feel it's gratuitous. not like yeah not like it's blue is really, the warmest color it's really fucking minute. weird yeah with like how like you know normally I've, any kind of sex scene like that's like this graphic you'd be like oh this is gratuitous as hell but it's like no nah, it didn't but yeah i don't know it was weird what's it called how blue is the warmest color traumatizing oh my gosh people love that movie okay. I, it, it's not yeah, bad yeah, it's just like yeah. it, i haven't seen it so i can't say that, it, that one even like the actors were like it made no sense why we were having we were just like yeah doing i mean there, there's we t- there's a long history of gratuitous sex scenes yeah, yeah. <laughs> out there but like yeah it's, it's like somehow this wasn't i think i not feel like it at least i don't know no yeah i think we talked about like i was off screen with uh, you guys were like yeah they shot a uh, angley shot 100 hours of footage for this yeah, that's and, a sexy. But, then, but, then the main, <laughs> but the main reason why was because um and he said he hated it he hated shooting it yeah he, he said was, it was harder to film than like the action scenes and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Because yeah, he because he had to like because one like for safety reasons and like 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 prosthetics and all that stuff and the lighting. But he said the main thing was lighting and body position and the mm-hmm. framing. And to get it exactly right, but 
them also taking breaks in between shots. Yeah. That like that's what kind of like ex- like took a lot of time. And he said he grew, like he got uncomfortable because he'd be like, hey, "Oh yeah, I'd be uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. if I was in that Shit. room." Like Tony, can you like move your head just like five centimeters up? Okay, good. Okay, Tong, just move back. Like just moan as if you're yeah. in pain. It's supposed to exemplify your your character's emotional pain during this journey. Okay, good. Okay, can we do this? Take sixty two. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, what's it called? All right. Um, but yeah. Okay, so let's um. Uh, like, yeah, one thing I want to highlight is, um, you know, maybe his handling and performance compared to Wong Kar Wai is that I think Ang Lee, uh, unlike Wong Kar Wai is a little bit more fluid, right? But Ang yeah. Lee is like very particular, the way they walk, their body position, how they hold their chest, mm-hmm. how they not hold their chest, um, the way like, you know, peasants are, um, what's it called? Ex- the extras that represent the peasants are like, like hunching back or like their knees are slightly bent mm-hmm. or like if they're scared or whatever, or like. They tense up as people go by. Like body position and body language is like super exact for Ang Lee, and I appreciate that. Like, what do you, how, what do you, what type of things you guys prefer in terms of performances? Like this time um, or like more? It it honestly doesn't matter to me as yeah. long as the performance is good. How they get there, it's, yeah. The, I mean, like, that. yeah, it's fun learning about like the way different people act and the different ways directors get the Jared performances Leto, out. Send used condoms yeah. for his role in suicide squad. Yeah. <laughs> that paid off. What a genius. Um, yeah. but like at the end of the day, if I'm watching a movie, as long as the performance is good, I'm not, yeah, I, I don't care. There, is, there. I, there yeah, is a difference I, I, between a good performance and a great performance. And I think yeah. I, that I respect the problem. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. On the go. I think say I respect the, uh, the process of being able to like, you know, just, Knowing exactly what you want to see and then being able to like execute that, that's that's really great. Um, yeah, it really just it depends, right? Like what you're looking for. And I feel like he knows what he wants and he gets it and from all the extras and everybody else, like that's you know, that's great. I applaud him for that, yeah. Uh, how did everyone feel about um Tony Leon's villainous turn for the film? Does this make you more excited for his debut in uh MCU, his MCU debut in Shang Chi? Um, I mean, I don't care about the MCU, but yeah, he, I mean, he obviously can play a villain. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, pretty fucking terrifying. I thought he was great. Movie. I think this is his best performance from the three films we watched. Um, I I think there's there's a lot, a lot of nuance to him, and yes. not to say there isn't in um, the I other films. You hate the other two movies? It's no, fine. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but I, you yeah, think he was Kar-Wai just so hack, fucking it. commanding. Like yes. yeah. um every scene he was in, I was just like, Man, this guy owns the room. Well she could have been in the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> that part would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh sorry, what was the question? It was a like, how do you think it was villainous turn and are you excited for Shang Chi? Because... Oh. Yeah, I mean I'm I don't know, I'm not like super stoked for Shang Chi, but I, I'm glad to see him making his like American debut and seeing him like, you know, come out to larger audiences and stuff and Honestly, if it wasn't for Shang Chi, I don't know if I would be. We'd be talking about these let's, movies right let's now. Let's hope that they don't waste him in that movie. Oh yeah, hell no. The like, MCU yeah. has quite a track record. He's, he's clearly yeah. like a, a, an amazing actor. He's he's done it all, and he's got massive range. And I hope that they they pull those subtlety and nuances, like you know, because there there have been some great villains. I'll say in the yeah. MCU, like, there have been some yeah. wasted actors. Oh, absolutely. Yes. There's a long, long list of wasted actors. Yeah, Idris Elba doesn't do like anything. He dies. Yeah, yeah. he dies. <laughs> but, he breaks the Rainbow Road. Jeff Bridges. But they, Jeff they is it will... called the Rainbow Road? <laughs> it's the Rainbow yeah. Bridge. But he breaks they're... the Rainbow Road, right? That's the thing yeah. he does. Yeah. Mario yes. Kart races on it. Yeah, yeah. Mario. But but they have like I would say. The MCU. You didn't warn the office. Okay, in, that, re- that's in recent years, they've gotten a lot better uh, in their villains and like how they're portrayed. From like Killmonger, you know, uh, in what's it called in Black Panther, I think he's one of the best. Thanos, Josh yeah. Brolin, and you know, Infinity War and everything. To even like Ego, you know, fucking uh, uh, what? The Living Planet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What am I skipping on this or, fucking name? Uh, or Kurt Russell. Or Kurt Russell, yeah. yeah. Kurt Russell. Kang. Or Kang. Or yeah, Kang. Yeah, like, right. 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 So they've, they've gotten... Kang's been in one scene, They've guys. done some great... <laughs> but it's a great scene. They've yeah. used them. They've had it's some... like 20 minutes. <laughs> some great yeah. performances out of great villains. Most of their villains are not good. I really hope this falls into that. I, you know, I think so. From what I've heard, like they said that he's the highlight of the film. Yeah, I don't think they would get... And Tony, Tony Lee Young to be no in too. this movie if he was just going to be a throwaway character. Uh, like, he's yeah. a guy that's mad about revenge. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. And then uh, last uh, cool thing I also noticed. Yeah. Stable cam- camera work. The only time it was like a lot of long takes. The only time it was uh, like shaky or whatever was during the sex scenes. Killed, the, no, no, the sex scene was stable too. It was oh. the um, when they killed the guy. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Which, which I liked. Uh, very deliberate choice. Production design, costume design. Okay. You guys did. Yeah, fantastic. Did fantastic. Yeah. Great, great. Fantastic. All right. Um, and then, all right. So, like, you know, you guys watch more I wrap it up. Final thoughts and opinion? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, let's start off with you, Ron. This time. Um, I think it was really well done. It was, like, solid all the way through. It was, uh, I think, yeah, probably Tony's uh, the best performance I've seen from him so far. Like, I... I think it was really great. Super nuanced. Uh, the the main actress, I, sorry, Tong Lee. Tong Lee. She was uh, extremely impressed by her. Like she was great. I'm glad to hear that she's still working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like I think Ang Lee did. Like this is like I don't know. Probably my favorite thing that I or probably the best thing I've seen him direct that I've seen. Hey, the Hulk. direct. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know this one or Hulk. No, but uh, I yeah I I. I don't know if I really want to own it. I'd, I'd definitely put it on the shelf, like, yeah. on principle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. but, like, I'm probably not going to own it. And I'm, I don't see myself really rewatching it. Anyway. Really? What about me? We can, like, dissect. You know, <laughs> like, how did they do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I would say, like, it's, yeah, it, it's a great movie. But, um, yeah, it deserves acclimates. <laughs> Jason. Um, yeah, I I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked it more like again on like a technical level and um, just overall film viewing level than I did like personally. Like, yeah. um, but like the first third of this movie, I think is perfectly paced. I feel like it, yeah. like I was super engaged the whole time. And then once their initial assassination attempt fails that's when the movie started to dip and i started to lose some interest but i I was still enjoying it the whole way through i just didn't love it the way i did the first part of the movie um so but yeah again like it's obviously a great movie and i would put it on the shelf just on principle alone as ron said um Um, what sorry let's finish your thoughts okay (laughs) 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 um but yeah, it's on the shelf. That's basically where I stand. I don't think I yeah, maybe I'll watch it again, but probably not. That's a big probably. Sorry, I have trouble waiting my turn. Um, I know. I actually agree with a lot of what you said about the the first like the first act is the best part. Um, I I definitely did like the first act more than the second and third. I I don't know. I guess it's just that like I think this movie really fills its length for me personally, but it's. Like Jason said, it's a very well crafted movie. It's very well put together from like the details and how it's made. It's a very well made movie. I just, I don't know. I just, it's it fills its length to me. That's all. I couldn't all right. personally connect to a lot of it. A lot of it just kind of left me bored. Even though I can acknowledge that it's good, I was also bored through a lot of it. Had a brutal fucking ending, by the way, which we didn't even talk about. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, and the when we, we talked about it when um we talked about like the actual real life story of. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it is a brutal fucking ending. She tells him he's gonna die, and then he runs away, and he lives, and then he Kills sends his all. goonies to kill all the yeah, goons. The, to old kill. Wu escapes. Well, fucking old Wu escapes. He yeah, escapes, old Wu escapes. Yeah, oh, I didn't care. Was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah old Wu does. escapes. The only people that get assassinated near the end are the kids, the, the, the kids. kids, the university kids. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they made a mistake. So yeah, yeah. Um, really, when she had the little suicide pill, I was like. I thought I she mean, was gonna take it. I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah I was like, uh, you're gonna take that, right? Like, no offense, like this is, you know, you know it's I'm not probably saying, worse. Yeah, it's you, just, you should just take that. And then she I didn't. also, I'm sorry, I don't understand her motivation for saving him at the end. Really, I no, gotta... because like, because she did, she has a weird, like, I almost like Stockholm syndrome in a weird way. Yeah, but like, she did that. like kind of emotionally bond with him. I don't know, yeah. just because like two scenes earlier, she was like, "Come on, guys, let's just." Fucking because because that's also it. probably like her like well, it's emotional conflict because it's different like, and when you're in the moment right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then because also she was overcome like she saw because you know and we find out like like well she, I guess we'll just briefly talk on the ending but she found out that like she he she he does love her yeah like in his and in in all weird fucked away and then when he got yeah. the ring she was pretty overcome with emotion and he saw in the look in the eye because Tony Leon master of acting 
Like he gave the I love you eyes somehow with like little twitches in his eyes. You're like, I could tell that this fucking guy loves her. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Tony um, Leung. But anyways. Well, yeah, um, I, I got I, 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 I do I do like the fact that like a very odd choice to have our main characters just basically die off screen and then have it from the perspective of like the villain of the movie kind of. I do think that was like an interesting choice and that honestly adds points just yeah. with that. I thought yeah. like the ending was like but anyways, the ending was good. Um yeah, I don't know. It just didn't work for me as much as I wanted it to. It's a very well-made movie. I just kind of got bored by it. Uh, rating. Uh, streaming. I'll probably never watch it again, though. All right. Um, <laughs> what's it called? Okay, so... Yeah, for me, it's like weird, complicated relationship. Watch it with my mom first. And then, <laughs> and then, and then watch it several times for some reason afterwards. Um, something about it just kept going by me because I'm really fascinated with this time period and, like, the culture... The, um, uh, the, 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 the cultural and ethical uh, debates that kind of rise from this. And also finding out that it was based on a true story like fascinated me more. I was like, oh, okay, let's see the comparisons and shit. And also the fucking production design, Ang Lee directing, and also me kind of examining Ang Lee, like, what the fuck was he doing? You know what I mean? He really, mm-hmm. like, said, I can do whatever the fuck I want with this film. Yeah, and then, you know, the ending, the final shot, kind of, it's him on the bed. Yeah, which yeah, is my then, favorite shot of the movie. Yeah, and that, whatever reason. And it was haunting for some reason. Like, it is you know, very haunting. Because, like, you know, when his wife comes and says, like, you know, Whereas she in the ass and immediately cuts to him face going up because like the shadow is cutting part of his face and he's tearing up, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when he leaves, you s- it, the the shot ends with um you know like his you know silhouette of the shadow looking at the bed leaving and you see like the imprint that it leaves on the bed almost like yeah. like yeah you know she's gonna forever leave an imprint on you know him forever and then just ends and you know and that left a pretty big impact to me as a kid even though I didn't understand what the fuck was going on because reading Korean subtitles even though like I said no Korean but it was like I was playing catch up um yeah it's it's weird I I'm like really debating you know what just fuck it this is the first episode where all three films preserved in the museum I do think this will be a classic for espionage films time as time goes on and also like genre uh, genre bending and stuff like as for as somebody watch a lot of you know genre films. Philip threw up three museum tickets. Yes, for these ones, and then we'll talk about Shang Chi and the ship bucket. Please no, please let it not be a ship bucket. Okay, <laughs> um, well you guys, thank you guys for listening to this episode. Uh, for me, uh, for us, we put a lot of effort into this. I'm really passionate about this. Uh, one of my favorite actors, and uh, I'm glad that you guys all took this journey with me, and we just all yeah, it was great. Kind of did yeah, it. it was a lot of fun. I. I really want to watch more Wong Kar Wai. Yeah, Wai, yeah. yeah Wong Kar Wai. I, kind, I almost wish we did an episode on him. Oh, we'll, than we'll eventually do it. Maybe Leung. we have an extra week this year. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Wong Kar Wai is kind of the man. I mean, he's been on my radar for a long time. I was telling Jason, I think that, like it's almost been ten years since I put like fucking Chung King Express on my watch list. It's one of those movies that just like cinephiles talk about all the time. Yes, yeah. I get it. There are movies <laughs> that people talk up, and you watch them, and you're like, eh. Chunking yeah. Express, uh, in the mood for love, Long Car Y. He's obviously the fucking man, dude. Yeah, yeah. he's great. It took um, it took a couple cinephiles, a podcast, and like forcing it down your throat to do it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah. This is like my name. <laughs> you know, like in my name is Earl. He has like a list of things he has to cross off. This is me. It's like I got a list of movies that have been on my list for a very long time, and yeah. it's time. It's time. We'll do Kurosawa soon. Okay. Hell yeah. I look forward to that. All right. Thank you guys to another episode of Have a Clue and see you next time. Like and subscribe. Yeah, please. Subscribe. I love you. you.